Ever have that one friend who loves something you know nothing about? Something you wish they could explain better? Well, this isn't that show. Welcome to Drunk Fandom, the show where we have a drunk host explain something they love to a sober guest who is clueless. Drunk Fandom. Drunk Fandom contains swears and other not safe for work content. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. The Fierce Ferrets do not condone excessive drinking, but if you do, please drink responsibly. Enjoy the show! Welcome to Drunk Fandom. Uh, my name is Luke, a.k.a. Gideon, a.k.a. Giddles. I have a lot of identities, and all of them are in crisis. Uh, I'm joined tonight with our good pal, the Flaming Monocle. Greetings. Hello, everybody. It is I, the Flaming Monocle. Thank you for that kind introduction. This Flaming Monocle is a uh, dear, dear friend of ours. From across the pond, and I believe you, you've coined the term, you were the one who originally Brexited. Oh, I was Brexiting before it was cool. I now yeah. live in Los Angeles, so that's, <laughs> that's, my, that's my jam. Uh, well, like, let me um, just say that if you haven't checked out the Flaming Monocle, he is wonderful. Um, tell us a little bit about your content that you do on Twitch TV. Oh, well, yes. Twitch.tv slash Flaming Monocle. Get that out of the way first, so you guys know exactly where to go. Um, I do a... Uh, I'm hesitant to, to use the word variety caster, but I'm a variety caster. Um, that said, I like to play video games with a slightly skewed moral compass, which is to say we play the naughty roots, we play the bad endings, we play, the, we play games not necessarily how they're intended to be, and uh, we have a tremendous amount of fun doing so. And um, I, I feel that's a pretty, pretty uh, comprehensive look at the, at the channel. So if that sounds good to you, go check it out. I will be watching the numbers. So... Uh, you know, get in there. And, and uh, what, what times do you usually stream? Um, pre well, here's the thing. Presently, I have a um, Pacific time, so Monday to Friday, uh, midday to 5 p.m. is my scheduled broadcast times. I've uh, had a lot of real work and real life stuff happen recently, so it's been a bit patchy, or, or a lot patchy, I should say. But uh, Monday to Friday, midday to 5 p.m. Okay, and that, that is awesome. Make sure to check him out. He is wonderful. Uh, I know the allure of villainy is strong, and it's even stronger with him because of that delightful voice. I was going to say, you do, you, 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 when you were born and you're brought up in, in England, it, it does give you an edge. Like, um, <laughs> you know, having the British accent to begin with is, is a really good start if you want to get into villainy. I also <laughs> had this happen to me when I was to, because uh, I, I did archery for a good deal of time in the UK, did a lesson over here in the United States, and uh, the, my tutor at the time, uh, because I was doing longbow, and I've done longbow for years and years, and, and they're saying, so um, you do longbow? And I'm like, yeah, I do longbow. It's like, I mean, how long did it take you to learn that? I'm like, eh, that was reasonable right off the bat. And she goes, it's probably because you're English. And I'm like, what's that supposed to mean? And she's like, oh, engine core. And I'm like, okay, well, war then happened uh, hundreds of years ago, and now because I'm British, I can, do, I can shoot a bow and be evil. That's about all I'm good for, apparently. So British monocle. You're getting the legit. You're getting the, you're getting the full product here. No, I like the full product. I like I like knowing what I'm getting. It's the the rule in politics too. So I just I get everything out in the open. But why why vote for the lesser of two evils here? I'm on full blown full blown monocle. Hashtag Brexit say, first. The, <laughs> don't vote for two lesser evils. Vote for one full evil. So, um, what do you what do you know about JoJo's bizarre adventure? Well, ever since I was contacted by you and the missus regarding this particular podcasty adventure, um, the moment that that was mentioned, all I knew was the title. And I had heard of the title, and that was it. Um, I, I am a, a fan of various anime and manga, so it's not like it's out of my wheelhouse completely. But since I didn't know about it, I decided to keep myself in the dark. So right now, as we speak, I know the title. Okay, so what I'm going to tell you right now, and um, <laughs> this is the best way to describe it, this is the queerest anime I have ever laid my eyes on. And what I mean by that is, you know how, not to imply like people will sometimes be like, oh, that's so gay. No, when, when we say that's so gay, my God, that's a statement. Like, this is the queerest thing I have ever seen in a good way. Like, it just ramps up every time, and it is just so whimsical. 
I, I can't I'm even... I'm remarkably impressed I've never heard of it then. That's crazy. Yeah, no, it, it is basically like, I'm going to get into it after we start getting into it. It is like, it's been around since the 1980s. Mm -hmm. And oh, it so it's is... Got that, does it have that really awesome 80s anime mm -hmm. quality to it? With it? Uh -huh. Really, 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 really basic. Oh. Yeah, really jacked men. And like, there's a lot of like, there's a <laughs> lot of like... Heads. Yeah, and <laughs> it's, it's wild. Once... Once we're done with this, I highly recommend checking it out at some point to see. It, it is wild. Oh, um, I plan to. I, I plan to ever since hearing about this. So, yeah, uh, no, it's great. It's podcast, I will check it out. All right, so um, I'm going to start drinking right now. Um, so for, for everybody listening at home, I am drinking some Knob Creek. Have you ever had Knob Creek before? Uh, the euphemism or the drink? <laughs> um, no, the drink. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had the drink. Okay. Uh, I know because you mentioned earlier it was a little strong, and um, I was curious as to what it was. But I said we should save it for the show. Yeah. No. And now I hear what it is. Uh, it's it's that's a that's a that's a nice it's a nice beverage. It's oh God, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Funny enough, I I love whiskey, but I'm really only well up on Scottish and Irish variants. So, anything. How delightfully from... British of you. Well, here's the thing. It's not like, I mean, because you don't get an enormous amount of bourbon in the UK. I mean, I suppose Knob Creek's definitely one of them. That's why I've heard of it and drunk, yeah, I've had it. But I mean, I'm, I'm really interested in trying more American uh, whiskeys and bourbons and things like that. So, um, yeah. yeah, if you I, if you ever get the chance, try Wild Turkey. That's also really Wild Turkey. I've not heard of that one. The only reason I know Knob Creek is because I believe the people that do that um, are also the people that do Jim Beam. You know, I don't know, but Jim Beam's also just a you know classic. It's good, it, not as strong, but like it, it gets the no, job it, done. Yeah, I was gonna say you you can mix that one quite nicely. <laughs> All right, so we're we're up for shot number two. I'm probably gonna do four shots of these and then let I was the. Say, I, I can't do shots of whiskey. I have to drink them long. <sighs> I'm doing it for the show. Right, <laughs> number two. I took one before and it was not great. All right. <laughs> Um, for those of you who would like to, um, well, whilst he's doing the drinky thing, I mean, for those of you, if you'd like to get on my good side, if you present me with a Johnny Walker Black mixed with uh, an equal ratio one to one of uh, Johnny Walker Black and uh, Green's uh, ginger wine, or Stone's ginger wine even, um, you'll have made a friend for life. That's my favorite drink. Is friend for life code for you don't get the zappy gun? It could be. <laughs> it depends what mood I'm in, I suppose. Yeah. Now, now, your lair, you have to have trap doors, right? That's just... Trap doors, lava pits, not only that, but it's a volcano lair, but not only that, it's a flying volcano lair. It's, it's <laughs> crazy. Uh, you know Twins Play Egg, don't you? Oh, um, God, yeah. Another wonderful content he, uh, creator. Absolutely. He drew uh, a concept of the flying volcano fortress, and it's just beautiful. It's got little, it's got little uh, rotor, uh, you know, rotors at the bottom, and there's like a little tiny... Uh, turret house thing on the side just coming off the air. It's, it's, really, it's really sweet and I like it. So I'm like flying Volcano Fortress all day long. Sadly, I'm told that there's, that wasn't, that's not even an original idea. I'm just Did like, he? I was like, it's a flag Volcano Fortress. And then I can't, I haven't got the thing right now. Um, someone, it's bad, someone who's listening to this probably knows exactly the bit I'm talking about. But there was a, a I can't remember what comic it was, but it was like, it's, it's, it's a full page spread of this giant volcano and it's flying. I'm like, Really? This is the one thing I thought was so stupid and beautiful that I, that could be mine, but I don't know. All right, so I have to ask you a question because this is really important in the JoJo kind of vibe. How do you feel about 80s music? Oh, I, I dig it. I'm a huge, I mean, hair metal is my gem. Is my, well, then you're going to love this because so many characters... And so many stands, we're going to get into stands in this, and, and you'll, you'll know what to talk about, are named either directly after 80s music musicians or like little, little jabs here and there, or um, the alcohol hit. I don't know what the last part of what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Um, in, in, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find the even Joe. Okay, yeah, yeah, now I remember. Okay. Uh, do you, you're British, so you obviously know who the Beatles are, right? I'm aware of their existence. I've, yeah, you've heard of them, I hope. Yeah, of course I've heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, 
the the term jojo comes from a song oh um, yeah, yeah 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 okay yeah, yeah it was like it. jojo was a man i can't remember the name of the song get back yeah 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 okay 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 so there are a ton of names and we'll we'll get through them i have a list up here uh as well of all the cultural references in jojo so for people who are watching listening well, so tuning that, in. i was gonna say because the, the actual lyric i mean does it have anything else to do with the song or is no it all the, the all the that's where they got the name from all the all mo right. majority of the names literally come from references like the we're gonna get into it right in the beginning um and i'm so one jojo of the, isn't a loner who you know who left his home in tucson arizona for some california grass not tucson but we're we're gonna talk about like how <laughs> his life got turned upside down will smith style all right so ah. we're ready to begin i'm i'm drunk enough or am i <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll keep it going all right so the first, the, we're only going to be talking about the first four series. There are eight series, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I figured this would be because I not all the series are done in American. Or, what is that word? English. Not all of them are done in English. Um, I haven't read um, Steel Ball Run, Stone Ocean, Golden Wind, or I don't know what the latest one is, but yeah. So we're going to be talking about Phantom Blood, Battle Tendency. Are these the names of the series? Yeah, so consider Series okay. 1, Phantom Blood. Series 2, Battle Tendency. Series 3, Stardust Crusaders, which, you know, mm -hmm. if you know David Bowie, Ziggy Stardust, mm -hmm. that's the reference mm -hmm. there. And then Diamond is Unbreakable. Those are the ones that we're going to be talking about. The first four series. Now, the okay. shortest one is Phantom Blood, where we're beginning. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, this is perfect because you're British and... This takes place in Liverpool, England. Have you ever been to Liverpool? Plenty of times. Like Can you it. tell me if it's really whimsical? It, is it really? I mean, if there, if there was any, I mean, it's where the Beatles originated, uh, so oh, obviously it's going to be pretty. Is it? Oh wow! Be, oh wow! Yeah, I didn't know that. Be, are there vampires? Are there vampires there? Vampires. there? Okay, well, the vampires are a big, big part of the first series. So, all right. Uh, yeah, so it's got like a sort of Dracula-esque sort of vibe to it. Yes. So Liverpool. I'm trying to paint a mental picture of this of this anime in my head, and then I'm think, when I finally think, get around to it. I'll... <laughs> think wealthy aristocracy. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So we okay. start off Liverpool, England. Right. I think they start off in Liverpool, England. It it it, it goes around in Liverpool, England. All right. Mm -hmm. George Joestar is in a carriage. Uh, or adjacent to a carriage, you know, adjacent as in near, nearby. Mm -hmm. So they're um, kind of like really injured, and then there's a crying baby, or they're not crying, but they're like they're wondering, sure. So a man named Dario Brando and his wife are like, oh, damn, some rich asshole just came in here, and uh, th their cart is broken Ah, let's see if they got and he he starts trying to like rummage through and loot them because he's a poor man right can i just say super quickly this sounds like every intro to every D D game ever okay so i have no i'm not i'm not going to tell you right now but like the first two series are really wild and everything and then series three stardust crusaders like legit feels like a D D campaign i'm not even sugarcoating <laughs> it it feels wild like they're all wild but like that one is the one that really ramped up the series and made it super popular. So, mm -hmm. so Dario Brando is like looting George's body and and the by a wagon, and George is like my friend, uh, my friendly stranger who's come to save me. And Dario is like that Jordan Peele gif where he's sweating. He's like, "Yep, that's what I'm here for. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's that's definitely what I'm doing. Yep." And he's like, "Is is my baby all right?" And he's like, he looks over at the stagecoach. Baby's alive. Wife is dead. And then he's like, baby's all right. Wife is dead, buddy. And he's like, oh, no. And he's like, you saved my family from this horrible event. So, you know, like, I owe you one. And I'm wealthy and I'm aristocracy. And Dario's like, holy shit, man, that's awesome, dog. Like, yeah, I'm, not, I'm down for that. <laughs> so that's, that's the beginning. And it starts <laughs> off. And then you see like this little like thing of a stone mask. Let me tell you, the entirety of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, like the first <laughs> two seasons, starts because George Joestar has terrible taste in art. 
<laughs> his wife was an archaeologist, and there's this stone mass that's going to play a, a, a role. All right? Mm -hmm. So, Jonathan, uh, years later, um, you know, uh, George. George, you know, George's son, Jonathan Joestar, grows up, and he's known as JoJo. And they're peacefully living at the, uh, the Joestar wealthy estate and everything like that. And we cut over to Dario's son. Dio. Dio Brando. Dio? <laughs> Dio, yeah, you get it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Named All right, after cool. jo Ronnie James Dio. Yeah. So I know a lot about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure in my short time. I've kind of become an addict. Um, so, yeah, no. His name is Dio Brando, right? And mm -hmm. Dio Brando um, is poor. Um, his father abuses him, you know, like beats him up, insults him, all that jazz. Dio's really intelligent. Like, we're talking super intelligent, beats people at chess, reads all the time. Even though he's so poor, he just absorbs information the best he can, you know? But the thing about Dio is he's a dick. <laughs> of course. He's so he's such a dick. And um, he basically, his father, Dario, starts dying. And let, let's be real. I'm not like... I'm not even going to shoot. He fucking killed him. He poisoned his ass. <laughs> he poisoned okay. him. And Dario's like, here, I have a letter. I want you to go to the Joe Star estate. Cough, cough, dying, dying. I want you to go to the Joe Star estate. And this guy, George, he thinks I saved his life. He'll take care of you. Now get out of here. You suck. And then he's like, I'm dead. And, you know, Dio's like, excellent. So he goes and he goes to the the Joe Star estate and he he gives him the letter and he's like, you know, I this is my son, you owe me, you know, please take care of him, you know, give him a life that I could never give. I'm dead if you're reading this, you know, cough cough die die. And George George feels like like legit like, okay, you know what? I'll take him in. It's the right thing to do and everything like that. And Jonathan doesn't have any other uh, siblings. He only has his dog, Danny. So let's, let's, uh, you know, like, they'll be thick as thieves. They hate each other. Mm -hmm. Jonathan is, like, the charismatic paladin, right? Like, in a D&D &D group. Like, he's the paladin. All the Joe stars kind of, like, resemble, like, a D&D &D archetype. And mm -hmm. so he, he... He okay. Wait, alcohol, alcohol. What was I saying? George. Yeah, he's the paladin, right? So he's really like knight, knightly, chivalrous, really just an a-ok -okay guy, right? So Jonathan Joestar, we're gonna call him JoJo at this point. So JoJo is like, oh, cool, you're gonna be my brother, and Dio's like, I, I hate you, I hate everything about you, and I'm gonna take everything in your life and make it miserable. And he just, like, sucker punches him. And Jonathan is like, what the fuck, man? And this kid just straights up makes it his mission to destroy JoJo's spirit. Bullying him, earning his father's trust. So, so like, he constantly is punishing JoJo. Um, getting it. So, like, at, at one point, like, he cheats in a fist fight. They're, like, they're sparring at, a, at, a, at a, like, a gambling event. And he's, he's cheating, and he, like, flicks him in the eye to stun him and all this crap and takes all of his friends, beats his ass. And JoJo's like, I'm just, I can't with this guy anymore. He's fucking driving me crazy. He sucks so much. And he eventually meets this girl, Arena Pendleton, who, uh, another reference here, Arena is named after the, uh, Arena Pendleton's name is based on a mispronunciation of the song Eleanor Rigby by the Beatles, right? That's a pretty big mispronunciation, but yes. yes. Wait until you get to the next cultural reference when we go to Ogre Street, which is a Queen okay. reference. It, it, you like Queen, right? Like, you can't be all evil. There's, there's, there's evil, and then there's evil. No, no, no. Trust me, I'm good. I'm good. All I'm right. Good Queen, We're good. good. We're good. All right. Makes me feel so much better about enlisting in your army. All right. So, or is it hench? I, I, I definitely would hench for, for henching. Definitely yeah. henching. Army sounds too, like, ugh. 
Henching. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Henching yeah. is like, you know, it's a tit for tat thing. Yeah. Everyone gets <laughs> some benefits out of it. It's all good. Just don't do I fail. get health? Do I get health insurance? Because I'm down for that. I'll hench right now. Who do you need I, me to beat up? I'll, I'll say you do. How about that? That's better than some places. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So sad laugh aside, right? Dio just is tormenting Jonathan all the time. And he makes this relationship with Arena Pendleton. And, you know, eventually Dio finds out about Arena. And he forces her to kiss him, which is her first kiss, who she was planning on kissing JoJo. And he was like, you thought your first kiss would be with JoJo, but it was I, Dio. And she's crying. She's crying and everything like that. And that, that one thing finally tipped the balance. Apparently, JoJo, like, he could have taken it a long time, right? He could have taken it a long time. But he messed with, he messed with his girl, Right. He made her cry. He forced himself on her. So, so Jojo like, it, beat his like, this ass. Is, this, is more than, this is more than personal now. This yeah, is yeah. Like... He goes kicking open that door, and he's like, Dio! And, jo and he's like, Jojo, whatever could be the problem. And he's like, you know what you did, bitch? And you were about to pay for it. And he just, like, rolls up his sleeves and, like, Mickey Mouse or, no, no, Popeye. Popeye. He Popeyes that shit. Oh, wow. No spinach. He just... Starts wailing on him, right? And then Dio thinks, all right, all I have to do is beat him this one time. One time and I'll finally crush his spirit. And then nothing will stop me, right? And he punches Jojo so hard in the face. And Jojo, like, like just, like, stumbles back anime style and looks up, like, bloody nose and everything. And he's like, Dio! And he gets doubly mad. And Dio's like, wait, what? And then just... <laughs> right hook left hook jab 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 right hook just beats the shit out of this guy like we're talking like he's like how can he be he how can he be coming at me harder dio's wondering like this isn't suddenly fist of the north star yeah basically like he just beats the living shit out of this guy and then george comes in he's like what are you doing all of you? and He's like, you both go to your rooms. I can't even with you. Your brothers act like it. Be friends. I hmm. Wealth. <laughs> and and then at this point, and this, I'm gonna give a trigger warning here, um, because this even you're a villain, and you're gonna be like, hmm, fuck Dio. <laughs> he takes jo JoJo's dog Danny, and he puts him in the incinerator. Oh, that's unforgivable. Right? Yeah. Thank you, villainous. No animals. Animals off the list. No, that's that's enough to turn someone into a villain. Yeah, right. And like at that point, like that's like the first episode, man. <laughs> this is what? For... Yes, <laughs> it felt like it went on forever, and then the, the it just kind of ramps up. So, you know, like after that, he decides to just bide his time. Mm -hmm. And seven years later, so the year is eighteen eighty eight, right? Eighteen eighty eight, Liverpool. Jonathan and Dio become kind of like more friend were friendly and trustworthy of each other, except they don't. Right. Right. They're they're playing football at college. I think it's at like Oxford or whatever, or some British college, huh? right? You know, like you got a ton of them over there. You don't like have to. You just got one. them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, everybody's like, "Oh, Jonathan, Joe Star, and Dio Brento, thickest thieves, brothers like no other." And like, meanwhile, they're having these internal dialogues of like, "I fucking hate you. I hate everything about you, Jonathan." And then Jonathan's like, "Dio, I will make sure that you get nothing. I will make sure you are just kicked out, ostracized for being an evil prick, right?" And it's in this in this point. You know, George is older. He's kind of really sick. It's 1888. So, you know, it's like life happens. You know, influenza, that nonsense, right? Except JoJo, he's suspicious. He's like, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. I know something's up. He finds Dario Brando's letter, right? And he, mm -hmm. goes, to Dar he goes to Dio and he's like, Dio, I just found this letter. And Dio's like, what of it? You know, what, what is that? And he's like, this is a letter from your father talking about my dad, to, to my dad. Yeah. It's like, it's so weird. His symptoms are the same as dad's. 
the thing dun, that he dun, died dun. <laughs> and aren't you the only one who's been taking dad his medicine and he's like what are you suggesting and he's like tell me you didn't poison dad and i'll believe you and, he, and he's like man man I, what what I, I what and jonathan's like uh-huh 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 all right i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you right now i'm gonna beat your ass like you thought that last beating was something. I'm gonna beat your ass so hard. Like the the like the the historians are gonna chronicle this, and you're out of here, right? So Dio, like he's like, I'm gonna prove you poisoned dad, and if you, mm, 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 I'm gonna find out what you did, and I'm gonna beat the shit out of you, and then you're out of here. No mas. And Dio's like, I gotta I gotta get rid of Jonathan too. I gotta get rid of Jonathan. And in their fight, I think I, I think it was in their fight before, there the stone mask. Did I mention the stone mask at the beginning about his tech? It. Okay, perfect. The stone mask got some blood on it, right? And when it got I can, blood, I can on, imagine that does. I imagine that just yeah, just stained it a little bit. It didn't do anything remotely important to the plot. Well, like it, it, it's like a mask, and then it had like little spikes come out where your face would go, and you'd imagine like, wow, that'll fucking kill a dude. Right? Like, just spikes right. going into your face? Do you have Looks spikes like going into your face? Movie. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> oh my god, you're right. It's like some kind of a Saw movie. So, Dio, speaking of, like, murder, Dio's like, huh, I'm gonna use this to kill Jonathan. It'll be great. So, Jonathan goes to uh, London to try and find out what Dio's, you know, been, like, poisoning his dad with. Right? And yeah, you know, like during they had a scuffle, and then a few blood droplets splatter on the 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 mask, and that was hanging on the wall. Hideous mask, by the way. It has like vampire teeth and shit. It's gross. Anyway, like they only missed it, and apparently, which is wild because like, nice note here. It was his mother, I believe, that was an uh wanted the mask because she studied archaeology, and it was an ancient Mayan mask. So yeah, uh, isn't it always? Yeah. So let's 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 go to Dio's perspective. Dio's like, I'm gonna murder this guy. Let me see if this works. And he goes to London as well to get some more poison and all that jazz. Um, <laughs> this dumbass go finds a like a local drunken drunken beggar, and he's like, all right, this is a cool guy to kill. And he just like puts the mask on him and like a splash of blood, and the mask like just <laughs> spikes in this guy's face and does he become super mega drunk well he become drunk on power yeah this dude turns into a fucking vampire oh yeah oh, fuck. Uh, yeah no exactly <laughs> and he turns into a vampire and he just like starts beating the shit out of dio and dio's like is this how i die the great dio brando and then the sunlight comes out and it turns the dude to stone and he dies and dio looks at the mask and then looks at that, he's like, oh, well, I kind of, I kind of like this idea of me taking this. And maybe now that I know it won't kill Jonathan, maybe I'll use it and become an immortal vampire. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and, and, and so during this time, Jonathan is... You know, in Britain, in 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 London, try uh, on Ogre Street, right? Like the the worst street. In, is that a real street, Ogre Street? Not to uh, not to my knowledge. I'm like I don't I don't know about Ogre Street, but uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> God, I guess I guess Britain may really love Queen at that point. Um, well, I mean, yeah, it's 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 not. I mean, as far as I know, I mean, yeah. it could well. Be. All right, so you're gonna love this this character and their name. By the way, are you ready for this? So on Ogre Street, if the criminals, like, habitate this area, like, it's just, it's a bad beat, right, in Ogre Street. It's a bad beat in Ogre Street, right? <laughs> and the lead criminal who confronts Jonathan Joestar is Robert E.O. Speedwagon. I don't know if you picked that up. That was the sound of my hand hitting my face. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, yeah, I've got to say, that's super subtle. Got to admit. Yeah, yeah, super subtle. By the way, like one of the best fucking characters. I'm not even going to just sugar. call me Ario Speedwagon. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, yeah. At least you know, at least they're open with their references. That's cool. I like that. That's cool. It is. It's just you know, American licensing. They have to change a lot because yeah. of like copyrights. Like there's a there's a stand in one of the future series. We'll get to it. I'm gonna tell you now. Called mm -hmm. Killer Queen, named after nice. a Queen song. Awesome song, by the way. Mm -hmm. And in in America, it's called Deadly Queen. Aww. Right? Like every person who lives in America is like fuck America for that. Like Seriously. we're just we're just like that's the one thing, man. You don't touch no, I Queen. Can see, I can see the lawsuits there. Like, oh, I thought I was listening to Killer Queen, which is the <laughs> song by Queen, but it turns out to be an anime. What the hell, man? <laughs> I don't think there's a lawyer in the world that would try and fight that one. <laughs> oh my god, that was great. <laughs> okay, I need to compose myself. All right, so Robert Eo Speedwagon, they have a brawl. He takes off his top hat because yes, he has a top hat, and the rim turns to like a razor, right? And yes, we never That's an odd see job the reference. <laughs> yes, an odd job reference. We never see it ever again after this point by the way and i just want to point that out because it's just like the coolest hat ever he throws that hat jonathan like catches it in his arm and everything and removes it like all stoically like anime protagonist paladin music and they they have a throwdown, and he could hurt speedwagon but he ends up saving his life instead and speedwagon's like oi mates oi this bloke here is a good right sword Am I am I Britishing well Close enough? enough. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry if it's offensive. I think I'm doing okay though. He's he's endorsing me. Um, but yeah, like it, it's super, it's super like blimey British man. I can't even describe it. First season oh, on proper, Netflix. He's a proper stand-up bloke. He is. I'm a big fan of his. Yeah. Like that. Like oh, not yeah. even. Yeah, yeah. And so <laughs> he and he and Jonathan kind of become buddy buddy. And he's like, yeah, I know who, who, who can sell some Oriental poisons because, of course, it's from the Orient. Pardon, you know, like, it's Asian, like, but, you know, 80s, they're talking about the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all right, they You're, can call us Occidental. That's fine. Yeah, he, um, he calls him from the, he gives him the address of the Chinese merchant. Are you ready for this? Wang Chan. I don't it's know if named, that's a reference or not. <laughs> it's 80s pop group Wang Chung. Oh, there you go then. Yeah, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, wasn't, I can't say I was a big, a massive listener, but yeah. Like. <laughs> I mean, there's going to be something. When we get to the, the second season, you're going to be like, wow, these are a lot of references. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, he, he Jonathan confirms, boom, poison, Wang Chan, right? Provides deal with the poison. So he goes back to the George Star or the Joe Star stand and he's like, oh, man, you've been poisoning our dad. How dare you? Right? You killed my father. Prepared to die. Yeah, yeah. He has police there. <laughs> Robert E.O. Speedwagon's there, right? Mm hmm And they have this bitter moment and <laughs> they have this this like moment. And Dio is doing the, like, I'm so sorry. All I ever wanted was a family, Jonathan. All I ever wanted was a family. And I've, I, I had a family in you and all the time. And, and Robert Dio Speedwagon, the bro that he is, is like, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. He lying to you, dog. He lying. <laughs> I'm a criminal. I know a fucking, I know a criminal when I see a criminal. I know a liar when I see a liar. That bitch is lying. And he was like, yeah, I was lying. And he puts, he's like, he, he puts on the stone mask and, you know, like splatters his blood on it. Yeah. Like, and he's shot down by policeman. Uh, you know, no, he dons the stone mask and the policemen shoot him splattering blood all over the, uh, the mask. Right. And Jonathan's like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm giving up my humanity, Jojo, which is literally the thing. If any of us could do gene splicing and become a furry. Like, hands to God. <laughs> if I could have ram horns in a heartbeat. Fur in a heartbeat. Just everything, right? Give up your man. It's a meme. So anyway, they're like, all right, he's dead. No, no, no. No, no. No, I, no I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I Dio's... was going to say, I thought it turned into like a mega vampire. No, no, we're, we're going to get to that. But I forgot. Before he dons the mask, he does stab George, George Joestar with a knife. He tries to kill uh -huh. Jonathan, 
but then George no, is like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jonathan, uh, Jonathan's like, oh my God, a knife. And then George is like, my son dives in front of him. And then jo jo Jonathan's like, my dad, my son, my dad. And then he's like, oh, this really is an 80s anime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like totally. So George is dying and he's like, oh my God, I'm, uh, your brother, Dio, please forgive him. I wasn't the best father to him. I, I was harder on you because you're my kin. I, I did all those things to you to make you into a strong man, to know that life isn't going to be fair to you. And I just, I felt bad for literally Dio. Getting the final, uh, that's like literally the final segment of uh, A Boy Named Sue. <laughs> yes. And like, it turns out, like he also realized that Dario was scamming him. He tried to steal from him and he was just like, even though that he knew Dario was a criminal and a thief that didn't actually save his family, he took his son in, mm -hmm. right? Like he just did that. And then Dio is like lying there on the ground and then he's like cackling and he's like, I'm a fucking vampire now. And then he just kills all the policemen. Policemen has super strength, super endurance. He can like literally send out tendrils like tentacles and stuff like that to drain your blood. He could stick his fingers in your in your skin like it's butter to drain your blood and kill you. And, oh, wow. and Jonathan's just like, what the fuck am I going to do here? So he, the they, the whole mansion start, somehow gets on fire. You know, uh, uh, Speedwagon's like, Jonathan Joestar! You know, because have you ever seen Dragon Ball Z? All of it, yes. Yeah, he's Krillin. Not the dying part, but like the, the, he, just the generally being Krillin part. Yeah. Yeah. Just the generally Krillin part. He's Krillin-esque, if you will. Oh no. Can we make that into a verb? Krillin-esque? Is that a verb? I believe so. I to think Krillin. Certainly... Krillin-esque. Yeah. To Krillin. <laughs> Everyone. To Krillin. Uh, you just Krillin that up. Yeah. So like, you know, like the side character in the anime who's like, oh my God, Jonathan just attacked him with a, with his upfront attack. You know, like the, the, the narrator I represent character. the audience. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> the audience flows through me. Um, so, you know, they're having a fight. The mansion's burning and Jonathan, Jonathan's clever, right? Like he, he's just like, all right. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pin this bitch. We're going to fight on, they're fighting on the roof and he has, he's outmatched every which way. Like, it's like, you know, if you made Jen, my wife, the bat clam go, uh, go up against Dwayne, the rock Johnson. Oh. Right. I'd like to say she'd be, she'd be, she'd be, she'd hold her own. I, I'd, I'd like to say it, but I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Not to say The Rock would fight my wife. Please don't. You're She's just... a plucky individual. You gotta give her more credit, my friend. I think I, th I, I think she'd she'd be tenacious in battle. I I would hope so. But like strength discrepancy. It's like he's just like <laughs> flicking him around like a fly and everything. And I believe I, I Jonathan and him like he tackles him. Dio and they're falling into the fire. And Jonathan's willing to die to stop this bitch. Mm -hmm. Right, and he manages to, I think, either grab something and hang out of the fire, or he, he rolls out of the way. And Dio lands on a statue, and he's like, "Oh my shit, this hurts!" Like, "Oh, good golly, wow, this is incredibly painful." Oh, and there's fire everywhere. I'm burning to death. Call, 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 <laughs> call. So, and Jonathan I breaks his another, another villain reference there. Like, I'm afraid I'm very badly burnt. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that scene from um, Doc where Doctor Evil gets gets rid of one of his henchmen, but it doesn't quite kill him. Yes, yeah. Oh my God, from Austin <laughs> Powers. Yeah. yeah, classic. I was literally going to ask you if you had sharks with lasers attached to their uh, head. I know. Everyone asks me that. I'm like, you know what? I've been listen, down. I've got to think of something else. Listen, listen. Everyone asks you until they're at the like the 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 Z generation or whatever is the twenty year olds now. They won't know what that reference is. The millennials know. Oh, no. Yeah, I know we're getting old. All right, <laughs> I know. Oh, sorry, carry on. So the, evil, yeah, so the, 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 evil never the, dies. Remember. So the big, the big mansion is on fire. Yeah, yeah, the, burns to the ground. Right. His whole estate. Jojo breaks his arm, but believes he's killed Dio. Right, and then there's right. Wang Wang Chun, who's like, oh yeah, stupid trope. I'm going to go see. And Dio grabs him and drains his blood and turns him into a vampire thrall and heals from it. 
And he's like, uh-huh. yup, yep. And then JoJo is with Arena, chilling out and doing his thing. And then there comes in the next character, Will Antonio Zeppeli, an Italian baron. <laughs> he's just sitting there and he's like, JoJo, I heard of Zeppeli. you. Zeppeli. Sorry. I wonder who they could be named after. Maybe a lead uh, of Zeppeli? <laughs> God. He's actually oh, that was a, a good one. Yeah, yeah. That was a good... <laughs> He's a really cool character. And it, this is where it starts to become bizarre, if you will. Not the vampire. Mm-hmm. This is where it also gets bizarre. He tells Jojo, he heals him using an ability called, in English, Hamon, or in Japan, they call it Ripple because it like ripples in energy mm-hmm. right so we're gonna call it hamon because that actually sounds pretty cool hamon is what um is the the the, the ripply effect on um <laughs> in when you're when you're in this uh, when you're forging weaponry it's the oh uh, damn i didn't know that that's when cool you harden, when, when you when you when you choose to harden a blade differently in layers it's the hammer look at this fucking guy right here just teaching me sword play stuff i love it (laughs) well but you said it was it was called what in english it's called hamon in english in japanese it's called ripple oh well it it is literally what it is because it's not it's a ripple effect oh my god i didn't know that that's so cool we learned something on drunk fandom together everybody All right, so like, man, I didn't think this would take so long for just this the one. This epi- is... is this the first episode? Still? No, no, this is the first season, but we're getting, we're oh, getting right, there. Okay, how it's many episodes just... of the first season? Like nine. That's it. Oh, okay, okay. Just there's a lot. Listen, Dio's important in see in 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 future they're stuff. Of, they're, they're, they're setting a lot of yeah. They're, they're yeah, yeah, about yeah. Okay, okay. So so Zeppeli, Will Antonio Zeppeli comes in and he introduces JoJo to Hamon. Right, and the first thing he does is like he punches Jojo, and Hama he reveals and he heals Jojo's broken arm, and Arena and Jojo are like what the hell, and Zeppeli is like that is what is known as Haman. It's a martial mm-hmm. arts technique that allows the user to focus their blood and breathing to do amazing things such as healing people or just or you know like he he literally punches a frog. The frog takes no damage, but the f- rock that the frog was on splits in half. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hamon is precise. It is mm-hmm. living. It is like, I guess, like a good comparison would be uh, Chi, you know, C H I. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, and like the martial arts thing. And this is where it kind of mm-hmm. gets more martial artsy. All right. So Zeppeli knows that Dio is still alive. He's like, that won't, what you did won't kill him. He'll survive. You got to really kill him. You got to either get him in the sunlight or you got to hum on the shit out of him. Right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, they go on a quest together to to defeat Dio because Jonathan's like, this is my, 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 my thing. We have to, we have to do this. And so along the way, they stop a zombified uh, vampire throw of Jack the Ripper, right? And Zeppeli mm-hmm. lets Jonathan finish him off to teach him how to use Haman. And then, you know, Dio comes up after they save this boy, Poco, right, who steals their luggage. And, right, they've yep. been set into a trap. Dio and his zombie army or throw army ambushes him. He's resurrected, like, two legendary knights from britain from the elizabeth first and mary queen of scots in the 1500s uh yeah. bruford and tarkis wait really <laughs> do you know who those are yeah bill bruford is uh uh he's i used to do his website for him he's uh he was one of the founding members of yes he was the drummer one of the greatest drummers in the world yeah so they're um, named after more references but yeah and like tarkis is a tarkis is a uh it's like it's an album it's an emerson lake and palmer album Okay, I have the list of pop culture references here. What we're gonna see this shit. Yeah. Uh la 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 la. Tarkus is named after the album Tarkus by Emerson Lake and Palmer. Bruford is named yeah. after the musician Bill Bruford, formerly the drummer of Yes. Yeah. Wait, did you know Bill Brufus? Bill Bruford. You... No, I'm I'm his IT Bruford. guy. What the fuck? <laughs> wow! That's a yeah, small I, world. I, I, this yeah, is like I, the I, most I, 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 this is like the most <laughs> apropos drunk fandom. Wow! Yeah, I mean, yes is what yes is one of my, if not my very favorite band of all time. 
So uh, shut the wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So you, you know, Dio resurrects the Knight Bruford and Tarkus as zombie thralls. Here they zombie, you know, like vampire thralls, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, they have the whole shonen esque, like, oh, Dragon Ball Z fight and everything like that. And I think it's Tarkus. I can't remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bruford is the the honorable one, right? Bruford's the mm -hmm. honorable one. Jonathan beats him. And he's like, look, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? Like, like you're serving this guy. You were an honorable knight. And he's like, yeah, I was an honorable knight. All right, just end me, man. Put me back to rest. And Jonathan's like, all right, I'll do it. Right? Dur right before this point, they try and fight Dio. And I forgot. I can't forget this part because it's awesome. Are you ready? So okay. they try and fight Dio. And Dio is really good at mastering his vampire powers already to the point where he freezes... Zeppeli's arms, right? Oh, wow. So he can't use the Haman against it because the blood needs to be flowing. Mm -hmm. So Speedwagon lifts up his shirt, and this is what I'm talking about, about it being gay as fuck. <laughs> he lifts up his shirt to reveal a rocking six-pack, and he's like, I'll warm your hand. And he's like, <laughs> touch my hand, and he starts warming his hand up. To be like, to unice his hand, which is like frozen solid, like frostbite. His, his fucking abs do it. And I'm like, when I first watched this, I'm like, this is the gayest shit I've ever seen. Like, in a good way. It's just amazing. That sounds fantastic. Right? So, yeah. I can't, I, I mean, this, I can't wait to watch this. I'm all, <laughs> It's I'm all so right. dumb. You're going to love it. So... They yeah, so they beat they beat um Bruford, but then Tarkus, you know, jumps the group, causes them to crash, they have a fight, and they're Jonathan's trapped and collared against Tarkus, they're, like they're both in chains in this room outside of a keep, right? And Jonathan's mm -hmm. unable to breathe properly, so he can't use his hum on. It you need to breathe and control your breathing to use it. Right? Gotta have blood flowing, gotta be yeah. able to breathe. Yeah, exactly. And Zeppeli remembers, like, he, he got a prophecy, like, this is how he's going to die. He's going to die in this exact scenario. And he recognizes the prophecy for telling his death. But he sacrifices himself anyway to save Jonathan Joestar because he believes this is the guy that's going to save the world. Sure. Right? And they, he does die. Uh, Tarkus cuts him in half, and he's like, he's like, he's like Anakin Skywalker in Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> <laughs> so it's wild and he's like gray hair and shit and jonathan's like oh my god my dude what are you doing and he's like i i knew i was gonna die this way it's so cool here take my life energy you know like spirit bomb that shit mm -hmm. <laughs> and he does oh. so they eventually you know like he 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 dies and he gives his energy and life force to joe uh, jojo and then they get to you know, the next part, which is Dio, Dio's in a castle at a, at a small town or village or whatever, and he's straight up killing all the people and turning them into thralls. Right. And it's just so bad <laughs> because, <laughs> like, long story short, he goes to this woman and he's like, join me, right? And, I, and she's like, only if you promise not to kill my baby. And he's like... I promise. And he, he turns her into a vampire thrall, and then she eats her own baby. And he's like, I didn't say you wouldn't. Uh, wah, wah. <laughs> it's wild. So, you know, they're at this town. Uh, I think it's called Wind Knight's Lot. And Zeppeli's Ripple Master, or Hummon Master, Tan Petty, and his okay. disciples, Dyer and Straitso, show up to help Jonathan. Really? They... Wait, Dyer and Straits? That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, and Ton Petty. Yeah, I, I got yeah. the Ton Petty. All right, all right, got it. Um, yeah, you kill people by breaking their hearts. Uh... <laughs> so they're, you know, like, where is Master? We're going to help you out. So they go and make an assault on, on, on Dio's little castle fortress, right? Dio calls mm -hmm. off the the horde that surrounds him, saying like it's like it's between me and Jonathan. I'm gonna kill this bitch. I've been wanting to do this for years, right? And he he 
Like, Jonathan's like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna fucking kill you for Zeppeli, you son of a bitch. <laughs> like, fuck you. And so they, like, before anything, I think it's Dyer. Dyer is like, yo, you killed my buddy Zeppeli. I'm gonna fight you. And he tries to fight him. He turns him into ice, so he can't do anything. And he just, like, straight up kills Dyer. And everybody's mm -hmm. like, holy shit. And Jonathan's like, speed wagon, fetch me my sword. I'm gonna kill this bitch. And mm -hmm. so they, they have a fight. Right? And, you know, he freezes Jonathan's arms. He got his, his, um, his, um, his, his fingers in his neck. And he's like, I got my hands on your carotid artery, buddy. You know how easy it'd be to kill you? It's going to be so easy. I'm going to make you a vampire throw. You're going to serve me like a little bitch. And Jonathan is like just standing there with the sword. The sword is all the way through Dio. He's a vampire, so it ain't killing him. However, the sword... When it went all the way through him, it kind of also hit a, a brazier full of fire, and it's kind of warming up and making sure that Jonathan's arms are unfrozen. So he channels the humon and the ri or the ripple into his sword, and Dio's like, "Oh my god, my body is dying!" Oh no 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 no! And <laughs> his arms unfreeze because of the heat, and he just lob. He just he just sends that. Hamon right into Dio. Hamon is like sun energy, right? So it's like killing the vampire. And Dio takes his hand and legit cuts off his own head so that it can't hit his body. Oh, wow. So he's just a head. And he, and he summons, after falling off a fucking cliff, he summons Wang Chan. Wang Chan. I'm sorry, I keep almost saying Wang Chung, like Wang Chung tonight because of the band. So he summons Wang Chan and he's like, get my head out of here, bitch. We got a Joe star to kill. And Dio, he's like, we got to get a new body. <laughs> and he's just like hopping out around like a grasshopper. It's fucking weird. Jonathan and the company destroy the stone mask. And they're like, yeah, we did it. We saved the day. And so shortly after, Jonathan marries Arena. They go on a honeymoon on a, on a ship. And lo and behold, a casket goes on the ship. Oh, no. What, what's that thing that vampires like to sit in or lay in? Yeah. So they're chilling on their honeymoon, and, you know, everybody's happy. And Jonathan notices Wang Chan, still a vampire, and he's like, what the fuck? So he follows him, and it's, it's a trap set by Dio, who's now literally just a severed head. So Wang Chan has to, like, hold his head. And it's really, like, not intimidating, but also kind of eerie. Right. And he's snuck on board with a special coffin. And there's a plot hole here, but JoJo is about plot holes. So just remember, there's two coffins now. I'm telling okay. you now. So he sets up and he's like, hey, Jonathan, I'm going to kill you. And I'm going to steal your body because you're the only one worthy. And I respect you now. All these years. All these years. And Jonathan's like, fuck you, man. And his wife, Arena's like, what's going on? And he gets distracted and... Dio launches tentacles from his head and severs, like, Jonathan's neck, like, punctures his neck so he can't breathe or use Hamon. Mm -hmm. And he's, like, okay, choking. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. He's choking. He's got blood flow and breathing in this case. Yeah. <laughs> and Jonathan, like, warns Arena, get the fuck out of here and everything like that. Jonathan uses the last of his Hamon to destroy Wang Chan. And, like, he grabs Dio's head and he, like, cradles it. And he's like, I'm not going to let you go. I'm going to die like this. I don't care. Mm, can't breathe, gonna die. And he urges Arena to flee. The ship is blowing up because of their battle. Mm -hmm. And John and Dio's like, let me go, man. We can I got like uh, come on, this isn't funny. And Jonathan's like, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go to sleep now. And I'm dying. And Dio's like, oh shit, 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 shit. And so Arena, the ship's blowing up. Um she She's pregnant with Jonathan's child at this point, and she's also saving a kid who got around there, an infant, right? I can't remember how that got there. Like, maybe she brought the infant there, or the, the infant was the, the trap. I can't remember, because I'm drunk. But... Ship's blowing up. Here's an infant. She... She, she probably save it. She goes into the casket, survives the explosion, and basically uh sails on the casket to safety with her unborn <laughs> child and the surviving infant who was whose parents were killed in the attack and that is phantom blood jonathan dies oh. yeah jonathan so he does di die oh, 
Okay. He died. He died stopping Dio. Or nice. did he? Dun, dun, dun. And then we're we're introduced to the next Joe Star because Joe Star uh, JoJo is about a legacy. So yeah, now we're introduced to the Joseph Joseph Joe Star, my favorite, and the best Joe Star, the Joseph Joe Star of New York. All right, so we're up to we're up to um, we're past Phantom Blood. We're up to Battle Tendency. So this is actually my favorite of the series, even though I I 100% acknowledge that Stardust Crusaders is the best one. Just this is my personal favorite. Because Jonathan Joestar, remember how, uh, no, not Jonathan, Joseph. Remember how I said Jonathan is the um, the paladin? Yes, you did say that. Joseph is the bard. This guy is just <laughs> crazy fun. Charisma like out the butt. So, mm -hmm. winter of 1938. Been years. Oh gosh. Robert Wait, E.O. Speedwagon Robert E.O. Speedwagon has become an oil tycoon, and his Speedwagon Foundation has discovered a Mexican pyramid where they found various stone masks, like the one that made Dio. Along various. with a man... Yeah. Dozens. With a man integrated into a stone column. During the worst, he's like, I gotta fucking break this shit, right? We gotta just destroy this shit. Right? Because it's been 49 years, and he was like, I don't want to deal with this crap. So he contacts Straso, the friend who also fought against Dio, right? And he asks him to meet him in Mexico. And Straito's like, mm, yeah! And he kills all the associates before injuring Speedwagon. He's like, you know what? I'm old. I didn't really get anything in that life. I'm going to take this mask and become a vampire. And Speedwagon's like, what the hell, man? And he's like, listen, I don't want to die. And he's like, valid, but fuck you. Mm -hmm. And so he... <laughs> He turns himself into a, va uh, a vampire. And, you know, like, we're led to believe Steve Speedwagon dies, and we're like, oh, Krillin. <laughs> so, meanwhile, New York City, Jonathan jo Grandson, Joseph Joestar, defeats a pair of corrupt police officers for brutalizing a black pickpocket named Smokey Brown. <laughs> named after named after the yes. um the the musician right Smokey mm -hmm. something yeah yeah God, what is it Smokey it's named after Smokey Robinson and James Brown so two musicians right like he he straight up beats their ass with a coke bottle like using Hamon he just like just like flicks the cap at them at like sonic speed and just beats the crap out of and um. So Joseph befriends Smokey, right? And then he's like, oh, you got to meet my grandmother, Arena, right? So Joseph's a total grandma's boy. Was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was raised by his grandmother, loves his grandmother, will die to defend his grandmother, right? So they're having dinner, and they overhear a mobster who's being racist, and Joseph Joestar gets up and beats his ass. <laughs> He's like, yeah. what's that? Yeah, he literally says, what's that thing doing there? Because it's like 19, 1930s. So, you yes. know, yeah. And Smokey's like, oh, I'll, I'll just leave. And jo John Joseph is like, nah, you ain't leaving. And Arena's like, don't worry, he has this. And Joseph beats, he, he has this uncanny thing to be like, and next you're going to say, and he predicts the future, which is important as a theory in, the, in Stardust. I'm just going to point that out. Mm -hmm. Um, and the guy, like, he's like, you're going to take out brass knuckles and then say, how did you know that? And he's like, he takes out brass knuckles. And he goes, how did you know that? And he's like, wait, how did you know that? And he just beats his ass and he, he finds out from the mobster, like, you know, Speedwagon's still alive, but apparently he's been, um, oh, no, 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 not that Speedwagon's still alive, that he's dead. Right, right. I'm just saying, that's a pretty big plot twist. <laughs> you know, that he's dead. And, you know, Jonathan's really mad. And he, I believe they mentioned that uh, uh, the guy who was with him killed him. And he's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At straight so. And so after sunset, Joseph's confronted by out, outside of a cafe by the vampire straight so. Who's like, listen, I know the problem you Joe stars do. And I'm not falling for Dio's crap. I'm going to fix the problem before it becomes a problem. So sorry, but you're dead, son. And <laughs> Joseph is like, oh, yeah? Pulls out a Tommy gun and shoots that motherfucker with, like, the entire clip. 
Wow. Yeah. And, you know, he's a vampire, so it doesn't stick. And then so he, like, he pulls out a grenade and throws it at him, and that doesn't stick. And Smokey's like, what are you going to do? And Joseph is like, I'm going to use the age-old Joestar technique. Yeah, what's that? Run away! <laughs> and he runs. He just runs. And, yeah, the vampire's like, fuck this guy. I'm chasing his ass. And he chases him to, like, I think the Brooklyn Bridge or the George Washington Bridge. One of them bridges in New York. Have you ever been to New York? Yeah, I like New York. So, like, what a bridge. That? Yeah, no. One of, one of the bridges. Yeah, one of the bridges that you can get to Long Island from. So, you know, straight so captures a woman, and he's like, I'll kill her. And Joseph's like, all right, I'm, I'm still running. I'm still running. He's like, wait, you're not going to try and save her? And he's like, no, I'm good. He's like, really? And, like, and Joseph <laughs> kind of tricked him and beat his ass. Ugh. And then he was like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? And he's like, listen, you know what? I'm I'm a, I'm a die. I'm a die, but I'll, I'll give you a freebie. Speedwagon's alive. I, I just dumped his body in the river. What? But I know, I know who has him, though. The Nazis. What? Oh, of course, it's the right time. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I have to. I think it was 1938. Did you? Yeah, yeah. 1938. Okay, so that's okay. That's totally a thing that could happen. Then. All right. Like <laughs> it's the Nazi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. So we're like, oh, the Nazis have him. He's like, shit. They're in Mexico. So Joseph travels to Mexico, <laughs> beats up one of the guys there, and then he's like, I need to sneak into their Nazi base. So he dresses in drag with like coconuts for boobs. Uh -huh. And it's like the worst drag, like like RuPaul would hate him, but maybe maybe RuPaul would give him credit for trying. I don't know. I don't I don't watch RuPaul's Drag Race. Anywho, so like he goes in drag, and they're like, "This is the worst disguise ever." And he's like, "I've never," and just beats their ass and sneaks into the the Nazi prison command base thing in Mexico. Uh -huh. And meanwhile, they're like looking at the 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 man in stone. At the, the beginning, with all the masks, there's a man in stone. They revive him with blood, and they dub him Sa Santana. <laughs> and I, oh, that's I, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I believe Santana is a, a reference. Maybe to Santa? I, I don't know. Call, call me crazy. Yeah, yeah. So there we go. There we go. We're, we're getting references. And, you know, Speedwagon's like, those masks are dangerous in this Nazi... Commander Rudolf von Stroheim. He's mm -hmm. like, no, no, he's going to be the perfect thing. And he's, wait, where did he go? And this dude, like, contorted his body like paper and went up the vents. And Joseph comes in at the same time. Like, he kills all the Nazis. You know, props to Santana, just saying. You know, just, yeah. you know, Nazis suck. Hand to God. Like, like. They just suck. <laughs> Anywho, so the, the perfect man, he's like, oh, shit, this guy. And then, so there's Rudolf von Stroheim, and then there's Joseph Joestar, and there's Speedwagon, who's, like, in a wheelchair, like, chained to it. And he's like, Joseph, what are you doing? And Joe Fist is like, no, I, I got it. I got it. And he's like, oh, hey, look, I can do magic, too. And he does that thumb trick where you, like, make it look like your thumb's gone. Mm-hmm. And the guy, yeah. they, they fight because he's not doing anything. And this guy is strong. Like, just straight up strong. It just, he can't do anything to stop this creature. And then he manages to expose him to sunlight once. And then the, 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 the sunlight freaks him out. So the dude goes into the leg of the Nazi and then the Nazis, like Rudolf, is like, I will die to serve the great motherland. And, and, and Joseph is like, okay, cool, I guess. I mean, you don't have to, but we could try and find a way. And he's like, no, I got it. And he walks into the sun, and then they kind of like, they both die together. But Zatanna doesn't die. He like literally crawled into his leg, like a weird little snake leg thing. And he was like, he's in my leg. He's in my leg. It's fucking weird. I don't like this. And so, you know, like, eventually he gets exposed to the sunlight and turns to stone. Mm -hmm. And before he dies, he manages to find out from Stroheim, the Nazi guy, 
that there's more pillar men and they're in Rome and the Nazis have them there and they're studying them like in their stone. So Joseph's like, I've got to go to Rome and him and Speedwagon go to Rome and they meet their contact in Rome, Caesar Antonio Zeppoli, the grandson of Will Antonio Zeppoli. And they don't get along at all. They don't get along at all because uh, Caesar blames Jonathan for his grandfather's death and, and Joseph's like, 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 that's ain't my fault. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> so they, 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 they meet with some of the Nazi people who have, like, you know, like, who are talking about the pillar men. And they go underground to a cave. And as they go under there, there's three pillar men. And this is, again, we're going to just talk about the gayness. Um, these men are the buffest men you will ever see, all wearing thongs and, like, silk garments. And it's just. As you do. Yeah, no, like props to them. I, I, I appreciate And they are named Wamu, ECDC, uh, ACDC, and Cars. <laughs> okay. Cars I got, and ACDC I got. What was the first one? Wamu. Wamu. I believe they're named after the band Wham. For the oh. Song. Yeah. Yeah, Wham would definitely, yeah, that would be, that Wham. Would be very, yeah. Wham, yeah. I mean, ACDC and uh, Cars. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. They're named after Wham. That was it. That was it. It's so okay. much fun trying to figure it out. So they come out and they just straight up kill all the Nazis there. And then Joseph and Caesar try and fight them. And this is this is so great because Caesar tries to do his ultimate Hamon attack, which is like bubbles of Hamon. And they just like just like whatever, dude. They don't even care. And. Joseph is like, I have an ultimate attack too. And he takes some clacker balls, you know, like you'd see in a psychi psychiatrist's office, you know, the things that tap, 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 tap. Oh, the New Newton's cradles. Yeah, yeah, the Newton's cradles, but just the balls of them. Like clacker right. balls. And he fills them with a hot and he starts attacking them with them. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh shit. And so he tries to run away doing the Joe Star ultimate technique. And they're like, what is this? And he's just like laying there after they capture him and he's like just laying there twiddling his thumbs. He's like, real shame, man. This is why he's like a bard. He's like, what do, what do you mean it's a real shame? And he's like, give me a month I could beat your ass. You know, just a <laughs> month of training, like really just hardcore training. He's like, y you really think that? He's like, yeah, just a month. I could easily kill you. Like, you know, not trying to, you know, kick you while you're down. I'm just, I'm saying I'm kind of cool like that. And so Wamu is like, you know what? I love to battle. So he takes his fingers and he puts his fingers in Jos Joseph's chest and he puts a, like, a wedding ring of death on Joseph's aorta to keep him from running away because he ran away once. And he's like, listen, in 33 days, just over a month, this ring will dissolve into poison and instantly kill you. Right? Mm -hmm. And then ACDC also places a ring around Joseph's windpipe to seal his death. And he's like, same deal, 33 days. And the, the Pillar Men's leader, Cars, is just like laughing about it. And they're like, yeah, whatever. We got to go find the Red Stone of Aja. Right. Or Asia, yeah. And Joseph is like, holy fuck, I didn't think that would work. Wait, holy How, fuck, I only have... Is that, I mean, because Aja's a reference, isn't it? To the... Is that AJA or is that... A... AJA, yeah, yeah. So that's a Steely Dan album. Yeah, it's a reference to the Steely Dan song. That's cool. Yeah, I know, right? I actually know that song because my dad used to play it. I love that song. It's yeah, it's great. It's great. Yeah. So sorry, yeah, sorry to interrupt. I just thought. I'd... No, no, it's because the pop culture references are amazing. So you know, like Jonathan just clutches Caesar. And he's like, "I'm gonna fucking die, dude! What am I gonna do?" And he's like, "We gotta go to Ven Venice and talk to my mentor, Lisa Lisa. She'll help train you." Yes, I know. So they, they assisted with her servants, Loggins and Messina. They harshly trained <laughs> Joseph and Caesar for, for a, like a couple of weeks, I think. Yeah. And they, they protect the red stone of Aja or Asia, right? To, per, to stop the pillar men. Cause they're like, they're part of an ancient order of Haman users, right? So weeks, there's a week left until the rings inside Joseph dissolve and kill him, right? Time mm -hmm. for their final test. And so Joseph and Caesar are supposed to fight against Loggins and Messina, right? Except ACDC intercepts Loggins and fights Joseph. 
and they have an epic battle and it's really gross because he uses his fingernails to like have veins come out it's so it's nasty you don't want to deal with that yeah and no, that's gross but joseph wins by tricking him because that's his jam right and he he takes the antidote from acdc and and cures the the wedding ring around his windpipe right mm -hmm. and then you know in truth acdc actually survives and he infiltrates lisa lisa's venice island and possesses her servant Susie Q. <laughs> and we got, we got Lisa, Lisa, and Susie Q. Yeah, yeah. And so they they find out about the Red Stone of Aja, and you know the threads to kill Susie Q, but Joseph and Caesar cooperate, finish him off, and then Lisa Lisa uses hypnosis or whatever on Susie Q and learns that the stone they've stolen the stone she gave him away. Yeah, and it's heading on to Switzerland. Right, so Joseph, Caesar, Lisa, Lisa, and Messina all rush to Switzerland, where they encounter um, a familiar character from the Nazis, Strohom, who's built, rebuilt as a cyborg, matching Santana's power using pinnacle of German engineering. <laughs> German pre-war engineering. Yes, and so they they get the stone back from Cars, who's there. And the, you know they they have a little fight. They get up to getting the uh, the stone from cars, and Joseph's you know is like na 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 you suck. <laughs> <laughs> and then so the next day they learn that the pillar men are taking residence in a nearby hotel. And Caesar's like, I'm gonna fucking kill them bitches. I wanna. I, we should just go get them. And Joseph's like, if we go get, it's probably a trap. They're just standing there because they know the sunlight will hit them. But like, we don't want to deal with that. And then so Joseph learns of Caesar's tragic past. He never knew his father because his father went on the same mission to like find out what happened to his father, you know, Caesar's grandfather. And it's like a whole lineage thing. And his father was like, oh, my God, the pillar metal destroy humanity. So I got to stop them. And, you know, Caesar resents his dad then finds out his dad had this whole noble mission. And so he vowed to keep it going. So he leaves and he fights Wamu. And he almost beats Wamu, but he dies. But in his, in, his, in his fight, he steals the antidote for Jojo. And he dies, and he just, like, gives his essence and, like, this last hum on bubble of his bandana and his life energy and the antidote. And he, you know, Jojo and Lisa Lisa come and find it. And so he's like, oh, man, my buddy Caesar died, but he gave me some energy and a cool bandana. <laughs> so he puts the bandana on, and he's like, I'll remember Caesar. And he, he's like, oh, fuck, yeah, antidote. And he drinks, but he doesn't drink the antidote. He's like, I'm going to drink it after I kick the shit out of the pillar, man. You know? And so <laughs> this is, again, where it gets weird. So they, they confront the pillar men, and they have, like, a little tournament kind of thing. And, you know, so Jojo faces off against Wamu, but they have to have a chariot race. And there's a whole bunch of vampires that the, the pillar men have turned using the stone nest. And they're all like, yeah. And even the horses are vampires. Vampire <laughs> horses, Monocle. Kind of awesome. <laughs> yeah. So they have this epic fight on the, on the, the chariot and then in hand-to-hand in -hand combat. And then it looks like he's about to lose, and he cuts Wamu's head off. And Wamu's like, my God, I can't believe I'm going to die. But it was in an honorable battle. And he's like, yep, yep, we did this. Right? And so he drinks the antidote then. And then the final showdown between Lisa Lisa and Cars begins, and he just straight up cheats. And then... He's like, what are you going to do, Jojo? What are you going to do? I got everything I need. I need the Redstone of Aja, except that. I don't have that. But I got, I got Lisa Lisa. And then like, he starts like using her leg as like a drum, like pretending to do a little drum solo. To just kind of like taunt him. Like She's like hanging for her life. And he's like, nin, 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 rock out. <laughs> and Jojo's like, what the fuck, man? And so... And then Speedwagon, the Nazis, and, and Smokey Brown come and they're like, Jojo, Lisa Lisa's your mom. And he's like, wait, what? I was raised by my grandmother. I never knew my mom or my dad. He's like, yeah, dude. Da, da, da. 
that's your mom. And he's like, well, fuck it. Don't hurt my mom. Also, I feel a little sexually confused because I kind of peeked on her in the bathtub. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. <laughs> and then the Nazis are like, that's fucked up, dude. And then Smokey's like, yeah, said that's kind of. Said the Nazis. <laughs> 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 all right okay yeah lisa lisa's real name is elizabeth joestar it was her husband joseph's father who actually died to the last of zeo dio zombies his what was his dad he was george joestar with a g or a j so he was named after their grandfather he died to a he was an air force soldier he died from Z his commanding officer was one of Dio's zombies and when Lisa Lisa, a.k.a. Uh, Elizabeth Joestar found out, she's like, I'm gonna kill this bitch. Then she did, but nobody knew he was a zombie, so they all thought she just straight up killed this Air Force operative in Britain. And she's like, well, time to go get a new identity. And what's even wilder about this is, remember how there was an unborn child? That was George. Yes. Remember the uh, the unnamed uh, infant that she was rescued? That was Elizabeth Joestar. What? His, what? Yeah. So, so you know, like they have this epic fight, and you know, jo Jonathan, uh, uh, sorry, Joseph's like sunset yellow overdrive, and Cars is like I'm a fucking pillar man slap. And he's like, you have no honor. And he's like, I'm the villain. Yeah, fuck you. And he gets the he gets the um the stone of Aja from him, and he puts on one of the stone masks and the sunlight because the pillarmen can't go into sunlight or they turn to stone. The sunlight. So the red stone makes uh, him immune. It makes him the ultimate life form. Monocle. Oh Monocle. God. Like, like he can literally transform into any sort of life form, and he's now immune to the sun. It's the first time he says, right. he's like, you know what, dog? The sun is kind of cool. I just, I, say, I just assumed it would give him sun immunity, but no, yeah. also the transformation thing. Oh, yeah, no, you got it. Sun immunity, yeah. So, <laughs> so Joseph's like, well, fuck. Yeah, well, I mean, I can see that. Like, the Nazis are using UV lights to kill all the vampires, but then Cars gets the stone mask, the super Aja embedded in it, and now he's immune to the sunlight, and they're like, what do we do? And he's like, you Nazis are good for nothing! I and mean, then, he got that right. But... And he's like, uh, and then Smokey Brunt's like, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? And he's like, Joseph's is like, all right, I got this. I'm gonna have to use the ultimate Joe Star technique. And he's like, wait, you don't mean run away! And he runs away, and, and Cars is like, wait, really? And he starts chasing after him, and Joseph Joestar runs into one of the planes that the Nazis came in and flies that shit away. Okay. You can tell why he's my favorite, right? Like, that's just perfect. And so he's hilarious. like, yeah, he's trying to drive him away from everybody, obviously, but also, you know, run away is a great strategy. Regroup. Regroup yeah, and re continue. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, I'm gonna fly this ship into a volcano and trap that bitch in some lava. And so he tries that. And he does. And he plunges him into lava. And then Cars manages to disable the plane. They go into the lava. Him and the Nazi Stroheim, you know, the cyborg are there. And he's only like half a body now from all the damage that he took. And he's like, woo! doggy we got him he's in the lava whatever high five and he's like dude i'm a, I'm a torso he's like okay low <laughs> five then and joseph he, he he's like oh man how this day can't get any get get any weirder and then cars unexpectedly re-emerges unscathed from the lava and severs joseph's left arm with a sneak attack doing 4d8 sneak attack damage <laughs> And Joseph's like, what the hell, man? And he's screaming, and Cars is like, mmm, JoJo's screaming. That's the best dessert ever. And he's like, dude, my fucking arm. Ow, my shit, that hurts. Ah! And, yeah, you know, like, just reasonable reaction. So it turns out he, he shapeshifted into a creature that would have like resistance to magma and then like burrowed himself up out of the volcano, all the magma and come came up and cut off his arm. Wow. 
And then he, now, the ultimate life form can also use Hamon. Because he's now able to take the sun's energy as well. Oh, of and course. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Joseph, Joseph tries a desperate attack and he just gets deflected, right? And Cars is taunting him. You know, the, you know, the monologue you would do to the hero, Monocle. The, the monologue. Mm -hmm. You know the thing I'm talking about. Like, 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 you can't win from here. And, like, friendly advice. Next time, don't say the monologue. Just shoot him. Just, okay? <laughs> just promise me. Just, just end it. Just I promise. Nudge him off Monologue the side. Afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Nudge him off the side of your volcano fortress. Okay. Just don't even chance it. All right. Yeah. So this guy chances it, and he goes to do a Hamon attack just to try and be ironic. And Joseph takes his one arm, grab, has the stone of Aja that he st stole from him, and puts it in front of him. The energy from the Hamon and the stone. Mix up, cause the volcano to just completely erupt so fast and hard that they fly up into the atmosphere. Okay. Yeah. Right? And Joseph just, like, kind of, like, does an attack real quick to kind of, like, push him up a little bit further so he's in the... So he's in space. And Cars is like, wait, 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 wait. I'm in space? And he freezes solid. Uh-oh. So he's stuck. He's now immortal. But he's stuck, iced, brain dead in the endless vacuum in space. That's a terrible way to go. But... Oh, God, yeah. No, he's basically a perpetual statue. So weeks later, Arena, you know, the, ma the grandmother, Lisa Lisa, the mother, Messina, one of the, you know, the people who was trained by Lisa Lisa, Smokey Brown and Speedwagon are all like at the funeral for Joseph because, you know, he, he blew up in a volcano. Mm -hmm. Right? And they're like, oh, my God, Jojo. <laughs> oh my god, Joseph, he died. And Joseph appears alive and unwell with a cybernetic hand from the Nazis. Right. Only good thing the Nazis ever did was give Joseph Joestar that cybernetic hand. I yeah. was gonna say, they've got that those those Nazis. They seemed they seemed like pretty alright dudes in that season. <laughs> in an alternate universe, they weren't they were bad, but they were a little less bad. They were We'd, all bad, but they did some cool stuff, I guess. Yeah. With cybernetics. Yeah. I, I mean, and he's yeah. like, hey, yeah, I, I married Susie Q and I'm alive. Whose funeral are you celebrating? And then, or whose funeral are you doing? And they're like, yours? And he's like, I'm not dead. So apparently, <laughs> like, he recovered for two weeks. The Nazis are like, hey, dude, we owe you for saving the world. Here's a cybernetic arm. And he's like, all right, cool. And, you know, Susie Q and him got married. Like, 80s anime, he, before, when she was possessed by the, the pillar men, she had, like, these, like, lesions on her body. He's like, remember to get rid of those lesions and you'll be hot again. This dude married that woman. All right. Right? Like, <laughs> you got, gentlemen need to learn how to compliment a spouse. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Says the man who no, say, says the man who calls his wife a spark plug and says you have no chance against the rock. Well, to be fair, I don't think I'd have a chance against the rock either. But yes, uh, spark plugs are dirty, and I like them that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, apparently he's he's like Susie cute. He's like, didn't you tell them I was alive? And she's like, oh yeah, I forgot to tell them that. And he's like, are you kidding me? And so we get into the epilogue, because this is the first two series. And now we're getting to Stardust, which is, like, so good. But we're, well, we're going to tell you what happened to the rest of them. Lisa Lisa, a.k.a. Elizabeth Joestar, she reveals her true identity, Joseph, moves to America to be with her family, marries a Hollywood screenwriter, and they, they live happily ever after. Rita Joestar, she works as a teacher until she dies peacefully in 1950. She's uh, surrounded by her friends and family. Everybody loved her. It was all good. Robert O. Speedwagon continued his philanthropic, scientific, medical research, all that. Dies of a heart attack. Never marries. Aww. Because we're pretty sure he was gay for Jonathan. Aww. Smokey so he Brown. Died unhappy as well. <laughs> yeah. Smokey Brown, despite racial discrimination and everything, goes on to be a political science major in college. Comes the first black mayor of his home state of Georgia. Awesome. And Major Rudolf von Strahan, the Nazi cyborg dude. Dies in World War II. Sad. I mean, yeah, he was the only good one. <laughs> he stopped the he stopped the pillar men. And then mm -hmm. we get we get the, the credits roll and everything, and then we get forty eight years later, 
an aged Joseph Joestar is seen at JFK International Airport kicking a Japanese man in the knee who bumped into him. And he's like, fuck the Japanese! You stole my daughter! His daughter apparently married a Japanese jazz musician. And he's like, I'll never forgive you! So, like, I guess slight racism there? <laughs> but apparently, he, he like, he complains he doesn't even know his grandson and everything like that. And it ends with him on a plane to Japan, which leads directly into um, Daughter's Crusaders. Which so, is the third, the third series? series, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, Gosh. this is where it gets a bit more crazy. Are you ready? You're saying that a lot. <laughs> it just keeps getting crazier. So, you know how Halmon was a big thing? Mm -hmm. Not really a thing anymore. We're going to get okay. into that. Okay. So, the year is in the 1980s now, right? I don't remember which 30, year. 30, you said 38 years later. Yeah, so 1987. So in 1984, in 1983, 1983, uh, near the Canary Islands, treasure hunters bring up a casket that has one thing on it, the name Dio. Around dusk, so it's nighttime. Ships found a few days later, only the empty coffin remained. Flash, fo flash forward four years, Tokyo, Japan. Holly Kujo, the daughter of Jonathan, or Joseph Joestar, she's visiting her son Jotaro in jail. He's beaten up four people. And the reason they called is because Jotaro refuses to leave his cell, explaining he's been possessed by an evil spirit. Nobody believes him. So he steals a gun, shoots himself in the head, and before the bullet could hit his head, a mystical force catches the bullet and stops it. She calls her dad, Joseph, and she's like, Daddy, you need to come to Japan. Some weird shit's happening. So daddy comes and he's like, yeah, my daughter, it's great to see you. And she hugs him and he's like, okay, the hug's kind of getting awkward. Everybody's staring. And he looks at all the people staring. And he's like, haven't you ever seen a father hug her da his daughter before? Get out of here. And everybody just beats, beats it. So he goes with her to the jail. He's like an old aging grandpa that's still sexy as fuck. And I've learned a lot about myself yeah. about this. I'm, I'm not even... Silver Fox, man. Silver We're all Fox. heading that way. We're all yeah. heading that way. We're all heading that way to the slight homoerotic nature of Joseph Joestar. Um, so yeah. So he, he goes to Japan with... Meets his daughter. And he's like, evil spirit. Got it? Right? And so, meanwhile, Joseph's just uh, Jotaro is sitting on his his cellmate, uh, his cell bed, and like he's got toys and entertainment there and all this stuff. Apparently, his spirit has taken all this crap to him, right? Mm -hmm. And all the people are like, "What the fuck is going on in the cell?" They're like all in the other corner. He's like, "I don't know, man." He keeps bring it keeps bringing me toys. <laughs> Keep him entertained, right? So. The the father's like, don't worry, Holly, I got this. Joseph's like, I got this. And he's like, so the police officer's like, are you going to let him leave? And he's like, just shut the fuck up. I got this. And he's like, I'm going to introduce you to my friend and companion, Muhammad Abdul, who's named mm -hmm. after, let's see, Paula Abdul. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right? Muhammad Abdul um, is talking to him, and they're like, your spirit isn't a spirit. It's something known as a stand. A stand is a physical manifestation of the user's soul. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. The sp <laughs> yeah. Jotaro's is like this Greek Adonis warrior that is really strong. Avdol's is one he calls Magician's Red, which is like a humanoid body with a bird's head. Sort of like a griffin's head, right? Everything. But it can shoot fires. So he's like, Abdal, uh, Jonathan, go, or yeah, Joseph, I'm drunk, man, so just bear with me. Joseph. I, I, you know, it comes with the territory. Yes. Joseph goes, that's a stand. Abdal, can you make sure my grandson leaves that cell? And so they have a little fight. 
jo uh, Jotaro stand is about to like beat the crap out of Abdul's and Ab and he stepped out of the cell and Abdul's like he just sits down he's like it's done he's like what what are you talking about he's like I got you out of the cell that's all I needed to do and you know Jotaro's like good grief so this is a big thing he says good grief a lot and in Japan it's known as yara yara daze Mm -hmm. Which is a big thing. People loved it. We did a whole comic in Dungeon Minis where it was JoJo inspired based off this arc. I love this arc so much. Yeah. Um, so, um, Jotaro's spirit is actually a stan, and Avdo names it Star Platinum. They're all, the, the first like bunch are named after the tarot cards, and then some after the Egyptian gods, and then in, in series, uh, Four, you you they're they're named after like rock bands and stuff. Like even in series five, there's one named like Aerosmith. Yeah. And course. Killer Queen. Yeah. So eventually you run out of tarot cards and you're like, oh, I gotta come up with some cool shit. So he names them after a bunch of stuff. Like uh I think one is literally named Biggie Smalls. Oh god. Okay. Yeah, no, it's great. So Joseph and and everybody are bringing to a cafe and he's like, I have a stand here as well my stand is hermit purple it's tentacles like viney tentacles that come out of him and he's like my stand's power is that i can see the future and i can take photographs of faraway places but i have to destroy a, a polaroid camera to do so so he like chops a polaroid camera in half and it comes out with a po a, a photo of dio brando wow and joseph goes to um, Holly and Jotaro, he goes, look at your neck. There is a, uh, a, a birthmark of a star on all of our necks. It's the birthmark of the Joe Star family. Look at the picture. Dio Brando has that birthmark. That son of a bitch decapitated my grandfather and stole his body. That's what he did. That's how he survived. He survived a hundred years at the bottom of the sea, regenerating under Joseph's or Jonathan's fucking body. Wow. What a dick. Well, I mean, when you told me that was how he perished, I assumed that's how he was going to come back. Yeah, no. By the way, great villain, right? Like, just total dick. Like, you can't even, minus the animal cruelty, because fuck that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, like, Chitaro's like, all right, good grief, old man. I'm not buying any of this. So he just goes to try and resume, resume his normal life. Meanwhile, the following day, he heads to school, and he encounters a transfer student named Nor Norioki Kakuin. Right? Kakuin attacks him, revealing himself to be an assassin sent by Dio Brando to kill those of the Joestar bloodline. He uses his stand, Hierophant Green, which is like a tentacle monster. Cool stand. Right? Mm -hmm. And Jotaro you just beats the shit out of him. He's like, you know, Jotaro Kujo is not a... I never said I was a good guy. But you, you're a dick. I'm gonna beat your ass. And he just beats the shit out of him. This guy, Kakuin, like, takes possession... Hierophant Green can take possession of people by, like, crawling in them. And he can marionette them like a puppet. So he beats Kakuin up. And he, he notices behind Kakuin's bangs is this weird little bug or spore or anything like that, like on his forehead. And it turns out that that's a brain bug mm -hmm. produced by that Dio. Yeah. Right? Jotaro literally takes Star Platinum and like rips it out of his head using its amazing reflexes to pull the flesh bug out of Kakuin and save him. Kakuin is not an evil person. He's been manipulated by that spore or brain bud to to serve Dio, right? And then, like, he, he's like, oh, my God, thank you so much for saving me. I was, my parents, I don't even know where they are. Dio has is, Dio is enslaved me. You saved me, right? And at great cost of himself, the brain bug tried to attach itself to Chitaro, but Star Platinum stopped it, right? So then tragedy strikes. And Jotaro's mom, Holly, falls ill. Apparently, her own stand is manifesting from Dio's influence. We don't know how, but for some reason, with Dio being alive, 
their stands have all activated recently and only the strong people in the family can possess them or else it's just kind of like slowly killing them because it's a, an immensely powerful soul thing it's a yeah. soul thing so without the necessary strength or willpower that you know her son and her dad possess she's slowly dying to the stand so joseph and abdal are like we got to find out what the hell is going on. And they've realized, like, if they don't fix this and kill Dio to stop this in 50 days, Holly's going to die. And Jotaro, who's always been kind of like a jackass around women, even his mom, he's like, mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. I'm going to fucking kill this bitch. So he looks at the photograph that his grandpa made using per- Hermit Purple, his stand, and then he proceeds to, like, like his stand, like, has amazing eyesight and reflexes. And he he draws a fly that was around Dio's body. And it turns out that that fly is only native to Egypt. So they determine that Dio's in Egypt. And then they're going to go to Egypt. So Kakuin's like, uh, I want to go kill that bitch, too. That bitch enslaved me. And so they leave Holly in place of the doctors of the Speedwagon Foundation. And then they, yeah. And then they go to they they fly over to to what did I say Egypt, but they're mm-hmm. stopped in Hong Kong, so they're on an air uh, an aircraft, if you will, and the stand the Tower of Grey appears. It's this little fly thing, and you know Abdul's like, "There's an enemy stand on this plane. It must be one of Dio's assassins trying to stop us." And it turns out that this stand's a serial killer who likes to crash planes for fun. Yeah, right? Like, dick move. Yeah, and, right. yeah. So, like, they, they track who it is on the plane. It's this old man. He's like, surprise, they killed the pilots. And the jet, the jet crashes in the sea. Everybody, I think, lives. Except the p- people he killed. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> you know, like, Hierophant Green beats the shit out of it. And so they're like, all right, so I guess we're not going to travel by plane anymore because fuck them assassins, right? So they're in, Hong, they're in China, they're in Hong Kong, and they're like, let's get some food. And then they, they're eating, and they're having a good time, and a Frenchman named Jean-Pierre Polnareff reveals himself as one of Dio's henchmen and challenges them to a duel with his stand, Silver Chariot, right? right so him yeah. and Abdal have a fight, and Abdal's like, magician's raid, fire blast, and just beats the shit out of Polnareff. Who, by the way, do you know what a himbo is? Yes. He's a himbo. Don't ask me how, but okay. Listen, everybody should know what a himbo is. They're yeah. treasure. So, Ponorath apparently is also under Dio's control with the flesh bud virus thing. And Jotaro extracts it and he's like, Motherfucker, I was hunting the stand user who murdered my sister Sherry Ponorath. And I'm I'm a I'm a kill that bitch. Fuck him. You don't put things in people's brains. It's rude. If it is rude. It's super rude. So now, now they're like, well, all right, we got we got the these are the Stardust Crusaders, by the way. They're the people who are gonna deal with Dio Brando. Okay. So they arrange Joseph arranges for a ship because the speed he's rich, Speedwagon Foundation's rich. So they're gonna set group they're gonna set sail for Singapore on a ship, right? And they, they meet a stowaway girl. I can't remember her name. Let me look it up. Anne. Because you know, in every every 80s anime there or 90s anime, there had to be a child sidekick kind of thing. Right? And they 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 realize there's an assassin on the ship. And it's Captain Tanil. The captain of the ship is Captain Tennille, and he has a stand called Dark Blue Moon. And him and Jotaro fight in the water, and Jotaro's stand, Star Platinum. Let me tell you a little about Star Platinum. This stand is so faster than the eye can see, it punches you like a thousand times before you can blink. It, it has speed and force. Proper so fifth of the North Star. Yeah, basically like fifth of, fist of the North Star. And it always does this thing. It says this thing in Japanese. It's like, ora, 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 ora
which basically loosely translated is like, come on, like, like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Like, we're fighting here. We're going to beat your butt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it beats the crap out of that. And, and then they, they, they find it. They, they find another ship, right? They find another ship. The, no, the ship's been rigged with bombs, so they go to the life buffs. And then they, they, they drift a little bit. They find another ship, a giant freighter. And they don't find any people on the freighter, only an orangutan, right? And the crew from the previous ship are killed in freak accidents. And the Joestar group is like, what the fuck's going on here? And, it's, and you know, the stowaway girl is being, like, ogled by the orangutan in a creepy real way. Which is creepy because they're, like, 13... It's gross. And then it turns out that the, the orangutan is a stand user. And the ship oh, is the stand. It's the strength stand. <laughs> oh, the stand of forever. The, 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 I the, can't the, believe. I mean, that is, a, that is a huge leap. I didn't honestly. Honestly, that sounds ex exactly like what anime is all about. Yeah, no. This, this is like the most anime anime ever. So the orangutan manages to capture everybody. Jotaro just like breaks out of it and beats the living shit out of the perverted ape. Or is an orangutan an ape? I don't know. Leave it up for the genealogist biologist. It's, it's one of the yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. 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 You know, like what what is that? Jane Goodall can explain it if we ever get her on the show. If <laughs> is she still alive? Oh god. I like how we're both feverishly Googling that. And... She's 85 and living in London. Damn. Perfect JoJo time. All right. Yeah. Going to try and get her on the show. <laughs> we'll All right. Drunkenly explain to her JoJo's bizarre adventure. <laughs> no, we'll have to explain something else. Maybe the other seasons. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe anime, generally. I don't know. Yeah. Might be a bit much. Fist of the North Star to Jane Goodall. Oh, <laughs> that's just mean. <laughs> all right, so they get... All right, one of my favorite parts of this anime is coming up. They eventually beat that stand, return the lifeboats, reach Singapore, right? They check into a hotel. The Ponoraf is ambushed by Devo the Cursed. Devo... This is the best part ever. So he goes into his hotel room. He's after name. He's named after the American band D Devo or Devo, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we got that. So he goes in to the room and he notices. And he's like, "Get out of there! Get out of that fridge! It's a mini fridge." He's like, "How'd you know I was in the fridge?" And he grabs him. He's like, "What are you stupid or something? You took all the drinks out and you didn't even hide them." And then there's a bunch of drinks on the mini fridge, like root beers, alcohol, all like condensation, everything. And that's how we knew he was hiding in the fridge. Uh, so he throws, I think he throws him off. Yeah, he throws him off the balcony and the guy is like, it's like I, that was easy. And then it turns out, and I have a thing about dolls. I don't know if you have a thing about porcelain dolls, but a fucking porcelain doll comes back and starts tormenting Polnareff, like tying him to the bed, like trying to stab at him repeatedly. They f they fight. They fight a bunch and Polnareff is like, so uh, I got him. There was a stand user and he decided to cra uh, hide in a creepy little doll, a devil doll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So later, you know, Jotaro and Kakuin are hanging out with that little stowaway girl, right? Sorry, I'm, I'm not talking enough. I, I am literally just wrapped at this point. Oh, so I know. I'm it's gonna... a lot to intake. You're, you're doing yeah. great. <laughs> I can't wait to ask you what you learned. This is going to be a wild treat. <laughs> so, Joseph uh, and Abdo are trying to spy on TV using their uh, Dio and using their room's TV. But, right, he gets a warning from Hermit Purple that Kakuin's a traitor. And he's like, what the fuck? That doesn't make any sense. And so, like, he's, he's wondering, right? Kakuin's acting weird. And he, like, beats up a mugger. And he, like, has this cherry on his lip. And he's like, lick, 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 lick. And he's like, you know how people, ch ch like, play with cherries in their mouth? It's weird. 
Google yeah, Google Jojo cherry licking and you'll understand what I'm saying after this. Yeah, I don't know if you want to do it, but you should. Doing it now. <laughs> yeah, you're doing it now. I'm waiting. Okay, Kevin yeah. really likes licking cherries. <laughs> it's so weird looking. And he's like literally like lick, 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 in the anime. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> so, <laughs> so Jotaro's like, Yo, you're you're being weird. You're not cockyweed. He's like, surprise, I'm the stand user yellow temperance. And it's like this rubber thing that can shape shift. And so Joe Duro is at a disadvantage because he can't really deal damage to this glob thing that just shape shifts and like it's like acid. It's like, oh, 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 there's a DD creature. Gelatinous cube. It's like a gelatinous cube. Right. I was I was actually about to make the uh, the comparison, so that's good. Okay, so gelatinous cube, it's like trying to do these things, right? And then the stand user's taunting Jotaro, and Jotaro, you know, gets the jump on him in the water. Like, they, they, they end up by, like, the, the, the coast or whatever. And he's like, oh, you know, I, you know, Dio did this. It's a, it's a big thing. I'm so sorry. And he's like, all right, whatever. Good grief. Get the fuck out of here. And then... The guy thinks he's going to make some money off of this anyway, and <laughs> he, 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 he forces his stand after he's out of the water onto Jotaro, and Jotaro is like, are you for real? As he's sitting on a, or standing on a, a sewer grate, and Jotaro uses Star Platinum to, this is one of my favorite moments in the anime too, he <laughs> uses Star Platinum to like punch the water so hard in the out out of the sewer grate that it just bursts him up and knocks the dude into the water and he's like oh my god my nose is broke you wouldn't hurt a guy whose nose is broke please and Jotaro grabs him by his hair and just uses his stand to punch him a thousand times in his face oh <laughs> it's so wild right and so he beats the shit out of that dude um, all right, so where are we at now? So he gets pummeled, and then there are more stands coming out, right? So now they're in India. And... Okay. <laughs> they're in India, and Polnareff has been searching for this man with two... I think it's two right hands? Okay. Who killed his sister, Sherry. And he's confronted by this guy in the mirror in Calcutta, India. Wait. Okay. And he's like, I'm um, a kill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They're traveling by train from from Hong Kong and Singapore to India now, because India is on the way to Egypt. I think. Yes. Okay. Well, it depends which way you're going, but yes, it certainly is. It's the. <laughs> it's Cal one Cal way. Cal to is, I was say, Calcutta is the capital of uh, what West Bengal, so yeah. You were really knowledgeable. You know that? I have flown into Calcutta. Shut so the... F I... You are just so worldly. I guess it goes with the whole evil domination thing. <laughs> it goes with a previous job, but yeah. Oh, that's there. So they're in Calcutta, and they, they get attacked by two other stand users. Whole Horse, who has the stand called the Emperor, and Jay Jell, who has the Hangman stand. Jay Jell is the guy who murdered Ponorath's sister. And he, he's like, I'm going to kill this bitch. And he tries, but then Whole Horse and JJL team up, and it looks like he's about to die. And Alvdal jumps in front of the, the Whole Horse, who uses the stand the Emperor. By the way, Whole Horse is like an American cowboy kind of vibe. Right. I want you to guess what his stand is. <sighs> What's the most American thing you could think of? Uh, okay, if it's not a bald eagle... Turkey? Or no, it's not a you? bird. It's an it's object. Not a bird. It's not a bird. It's, it's an, object. an object. Yeah. What's the most American object I can think of? Ooh. All right. Give me some time to think of some things. I'll come back to you. All right. I'm not. I'm not gonna say what it is yet. We're gonna. We're gonna go back. Just think. It's not food related. It's an actual object. Well, as opposed to like not the American, literally American flag. 
No, 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 not, not a flag. That's a good one. No, um, no, not like a hamburger because that's like a, an American thing. Man, uh -huh. I could go for a burger. Damn alcohol. All right, so do you give up or do you want to take a guess? Uh, no, go on, tell me. It's a fucking gun. It's a handgun. Oh my god, of course. I know, right? <laughs> it's so stupid. That's that's strangely apt, I suppose. What is it a revolver at least? I don't know. I'm gonna send you a picture. It's a fucking it's a gun. Yeah, okay, yeah. No, it's, it's, like, it's like at least it's got that kind of cool old fashioned vibe to it. Yeah. Yeah, I know, right? I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, it wasn't gonna be like a like a Glock or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, whole horse tries to shoot him because they're teaming up to kill the the starters crusaders. Abdel jumps in the way, saves Ponaraf's life, dies in the process, and everybody's like, "No, Abdel, you were so cool." Because he was, he was, he was cool. Yeah. And so. You know, then they're like, we've got to get the rest of them before they, you know, figure out that we could do stuff. So they team up. They get Kakuin and, and, and Polnareff to fight him. So the hanged man can literally flee inside mirrored images, reflections. Oh, cool. Well, the other is like a gun. <laughs> I, like the, I like the cool mirror one. Yeah, I know, right? It's so, it's so. Some of them are trippy, and then you have the most American thing, which is a gun. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like and reflections and stuff. So, you know, they try and bait the duo into a trap. Kakuin makes him focus on a shiny coin, tosses it in the air. Then Ponarap, the way that he kills you is he. If you're looking at the shiny object, he can, like, literally just fly through your brain. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, they trap him in a coin, and they cut the coin in half. And he gets out of the stand. He's like, oh, my God, I just never, I just wanted to kill people. Is that so wrong? And then they're like, yes! <laughs> yes, that's so fucking wrong, man! That's, like, the definition of wrong! Jeez, you dumb butt! And then Ponorav Pol kills him, and he avenges his sister. And Whole Horse is like, "I'm fucking out of here. Run away!" And so, the apparently the Hangman stand user has a mom called Enya the Hag, who's like, "They killed my sweet baby boy. I'm gonna kill them." Who serves Dio? She's actually the one who got Dio to have a stand. And and start this whole fucking hubba baloo. Mm -hmm. So after that, you know the girl that whole horse was like flirting with, she's like, "Oh no, they're did. oh my my sweet bay, he's gone and he ain't coming back." So the Stardust Crusaders are like, "I I guess you can come with us for some reason." And you know they they bury they bury Abdul. Oh no no! Jos Jotaro and Joseph was like, "We we buried all of Dahl while you're doing your thing. Let's just move on. We have a mission to do." And so we get to another part. They're on their way to v v Varanasi, right? And they're joined by the the woman who like fell in love with Polnareff. And Joseph notices like a boil on his arm, and he's like, "Ew, gross!" And so he goes to like a doctor, and it turns out the boil is a stand. It's the Empress stand. And it's like, I'm a I'm a fucking frame you for murder and then kill you, Joseph. So it kills the doctor trying to excise the boil, and it's on his arm. And it's it's by the way, only a stand can kill another stand. Okay, you can't I mean. you can't I I totally forgot that. You can't actually hurt a stand. Normal people can't see them. Only stand users can see stands. And if you're a stand user, you're more likely to encounter another stand user. They're, like, karmically bound. Mm -hmm. Got it. So, like, he, the, the boil is, like, this annoying little, like, gnat. And it straight up kills the doctor. And it's like, I killed the doctor, everybody. And the nurse comes in and she's like, what happened? Oh, my God, the doctor's dead. And he's like, I, Joseph Joestar, have killed the doctor. And he's like, it's not me. It's the boil. The boil did it. And the, the nurse is like. 
I, all right, I'm, I'm gonna call the cops and tell them the, the boy did it. I'm just gonna like slide out of this room and Joseph's like, fuck, shit, industrial pollution, fuck, oh my God, I'm out of here. So he's running, he's running and trying to get this thing off of him using Haman, it doesn't work because he could still use that because he knows it and everything like that. Only a stand can kill it. And so he's running through the streets of um, India and this thing is taunting him. And like straight up, he he finds a, a barrel full of something and he dunks it in there. Right? Mm-hmm. And the, the boy was like, what did you... The boy pulls out like a rusty, a rusty piece of metal and like stabs him in the throat. He's like, now you're going to get tetanus and die if the carotid artery doesn't die. And then it's like, wait, wait, why can't I move? Why can't I move? And he's like, oh, you know, like a fine wine, I have aged to perfection. Pulls the knife thing out of his neck and he's like, you know what? Uh, I tricked your ass. My stand, Hermit Purple, led me to the thing that could freeze you. His stand is precognitive. When he was running through the streets of Calcutta, he burst open um, some flour, and the flour drew him a map. Uh, the stand drew him a map of where to go to stop this enemy stand. Okay, yeah, so precognition's always handy. Yeah. So he uses Hermit Purple to, like, sever the boil off of his arm, and it dies. And then, meanwhile, Polnareff's been flirting with this woman the whole time that dealt with Polnareff. And then she just, just, just disintegrates. Cuts in half. Because whatever happens to the stand user happens to... Whatever happens to the stand happens to the stand user. And Ooh. Joseph's like, you idiot. <laughs> Not so, yeah, super fun way to go. So, you know, like, later on, they encounter another stand. A, they're, they're driving, they're doing their driving thing, and they encounter a mysterious car driver who's stalking them and ambushes them, and it's revealed that the car is a stand, the Wheel of Fortune. Of course. And it's like a hot rod, you know, like a muscle car, and Jotaro, it lights Jotaro on fire. He digs himself into the the earth to catch off fire. Breaks out of the earth with Star Platinum and punches the dude out of the car and beats the shit out of him. Ew. And its user was named ZZ after ZZ Top. Of, yeah, of course. Does he have a huge beard? No, no, which is weird, right? It just had two huge bi- He just had two huge biceps. It's a weird, weird guy. Because, you know, you, your arm is out of the car. So your, you know, big bicep thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's wild. All right. So after that, they, they go to Pakistan and they meet the hangman's mom, Enya. Of course. Right, and her her stand is the stand justice, and it can like take possession of people. Like everybody in the town is like kind of like zombie esque, and then she manages to get the stand to infect Polnareff, and p she's like lick this toilet seat, and he's like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to. This is this is Pakistan. It's not going to be a clean toilet seat. Please, please don't do this. And whole horse is there, and whole horse is like, I was friends with your your mom uh, uh, or your your son and she's like you fucking left him to die bitch and then <laughs> and then Jotaro comes out of the the woodwork and beats the shit out of this old woman Oof. and it's so wild so after that they're in I think uh, uh, let's see they're in Karachi right I don't know where that is but they have it's Enya they have Enya as a hostage Right, and they meet a haggler who's, and you know, jo Joseph, who's like a boomer at this point, is or like the silent generation, but is the equivalent of a boomer in the 1980s. Is like, let me haggle with them for some food because we're all hungry. And he haggles, and he does a piss poor job of it. And they are encountering Steely Dan, <laughs> and their stand. 
That's the yeah. second Steely Dan reference. Yes. Great band. Um, so he activates the spores that Dio planted in her brain to kill her with his stand, the lovers. So he reveals that his lover's stand is microscopic, can enter someone's brain, and then whatever damage is done to them or done to him or anything happens to them, and he can just slowly kill them. And so he puts the, the lovers in Joseph, and he's trying to kill him. So Polar and Kakuin shrink down their stands to microscopic size, go into Jotaro's, or I'm sorry, Joseph's brain, and he uses Hermit Purple to show what's in his brain with his stand on a TV at a shop. And so they're fighting, and this entire time, Steely Dan is just being an asshole to Jotaro, and just being like, oh, yeah, you know, like, if you don't do this, I'm gonna kill your grandpa. Like, he literally uses him as a fucking bridge across a walkway. He's like, get down on your knees, and I'll walk all over you. And, like, this is, again, one of my favorite moments. Like, he, he, when they get rid of that stand, he beats the shit out of him. And to yeah. the point where he's like, all right, all right, all right, I give up, I give up, Dio, maybe do it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please, I'll never, I'll never, ever do this again. And he's like, yeah, all right, good grief, get the fuck out of here, you pathetic little shit. And he's like, oh, Jotaro, you don't know it, but my stand went into that little girl's head, and I'll kill her if you try and fight back. And he pulls out a switchblade, <laughs> and he pulls out a switchblade, he's like, I'm gonna stab you to death, you little bitch. And Jotaro's like, all right, good grief. We're done with this. And he, he's going to stab me. You're going to stab me? And he grabs his arm and he makes him, bends his arm back and stabs himself in the chin. And he's like, you're going to stab me like this? And he's like, what are you doing, that little girl? And he's like, nah, nah, uh-uh. Kakuin's found your stand before it went into her ear and like trapped it with its little tentacle tail. That's why you can't move right now. He's like, no, 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 no. I'm so sorry. Please, 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 uh, forgive me. I'll never do it again. I'll give you all the money. And he's like, that Dio gave me. And he's like, no, nah, yours is a debt that can't be repaid with money. And he just beats the living shit out of this guy so hard, he punches him through a wall. And then he writes, <laughs> he writes a receipt. And he's like, keep the change, bitch. Oof. I know, right? That's awesome. So then they go to Arabia, and they're attacked by the stand, the sun, right? It's shooting solar energy down and, like, frying everything, killing everything, and making them suffer heat stroke. And they're all laughing, and they're like, we're going to die, we're going to die. And Jotaro is like, no, we're not. Look at that. That that spot over there looks weird. And he takes Star Platinum, and he flicks a rock, and he just right through this dude's head with a pebble. Wow. Dude was hiding behind a mirror with air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, what a dick. Next, we, <laughs> I mean, it's still in Arabia. Kakuin's like, I wake up, he's having a dream where he's in a nightmarish theme park a la, a la Friday, uh, not Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street. You ever see those? Mm -hmm. The Death Stand, right? He wakes mm -hmm. up, Polnareff wakes him up, and Kakuin forgets about his dream. Keeps going back to they're saddled with a baby little baby with weird fucking vampire teeth by the way so it should have been a sign that that baby's not right <laughs> <laughs> Ponoraf and Kakui doze off they're in a plane they share the dream the death stand is trying to kill them they realize with horror they can't summon their stands in the dream world to defend themselves so Kakui <laughs> takes a knife and he grades the word in his forum, baby stand. And they wake up as the plane crashes. And he's like, the baby did it. The baby did it. And everybody's obviously like, he's really deranged. This baby can't kill anybody. <laughs> and so they, he's like, he tries to kill this fucking baby. Right? He's like, see, the baby's evil. And this, <laughs> they knock him out. But right before he gets knocked out, he summons his stand. So all of them go to sleep, and they all wake up in the nightmare world, right? And they're like, oh shit, Kakuin was right. And then Kakuin comes in with his stand, Hierophant Green, 
because he woke, he went to sleep with the stand summoned, it's summoned in the dream world, and he fought death and beat his ass. And then the next morning, they're like, oh, so you, they don't remember anything except Kakuin. And he looks at the baby and he's just like, okay, you ever do that, I will make sure to fucking kill you, kid. And he's like, and I'm going to teach you a lesson. And everybody's like, oh, you're feeding the baby? And he's like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm feeding the baby. And he takes the baby's poop from the diaper, stirs it in the baby's food. And he's like, just know who sent you, bitch. <laughs> and then Joseph feeds the baby the poop food. Oh. I know, it's awful. So then they go to the Red Sea. And they meet Abdal's father, who's like, I don't want to see you, you got my son killed. Right? Mm -hmm. And so they're like, oh. And Polnareff's feeling guilty because he's the one who got his son killed. And he finds an old Arabic oil lamp. And he rubs it. And he summons the judgment stand, not realizing it's Stan. He thinks he's a real genie. So he wishes for his sister Sherry to come back to life. Because he's like, yeah, you're a genie, sure. Bring my sister back to life. And she comes back to life. And he's like, shit, come, Avdol, come back to life. And he's like, all right. And they're zombies, and they try and kill him. Right. <laughs> and then the real Avdol reveals himself. It wasn't Avdol's father. It was Avdol himself healing this whole time. He never died. They never buried him. They kept the secret from Dio so that no one could find out he was alive. And so he, he basically, they find, the, they find the judgment stand user underground with like a reed, breathing through the reed, and so Abdal pees on it. And then, this and then is, this is a very scatological friendly episode. <laughs> I know, right? He's like, oh, yeah, let's all have a fun time. So then they get aboard a yellow submarine. That the that the of course it's a yellow, yeah, of course yeah. it's a yellow submarine. Okay. They they get a submarine that the the, the Speedwagon Foundation does, and so you know, like Joseph's calling his wife, and he's like, "Yeah, we're almost done with this whole thing. You know, it's gonna be fine. No, Holly's gonna be great. Yeah, no, no, you don't have to go to Japan. Don't worry about her." <laughs> so she goes to Japan, obviously. And they're attacked by another stand, the High Priestess. The stand that could take form of anything metallic, right? And so they're at the bottom of the, the Red Sea. They're, they're getting beat up by this stand who's trying to kill people. And then it turns into this giant mouth. And it's kind of like a Vor vibe. And they're all swallowed whole by this mouth. And there's this woman who's like, mm, it's a shame that you're all so cute. I'd hate to kill you. And Jotaro... He's like, especially that Jotaro person, he's super cute. And everybody's like, Jotaro, just fucking lie to her. Just be like, you're so cute, too. And <laughs> he's like, you're, it, it is a shame. I mean, I, I wish we could have gotten to know each other. And she's like, yeah, except you're a fucking liar. He's like, all right, enough of this shit. And she tries to chomp down on him. <laughs> and Star Platinum is like, ora, And just starts breaking all of her teeth. All of the stand's oh. teeth. Which, remember, whatever happens to the stand happens to the user. So when they yeah. find her, she's just like a mess of broken teeth. Oh. So then they arrive to Egypt. And they meet a member of the Speedwagon Foundation after getting a car. And they meet with the, the latest member of the Stardust Crusaders, Iggy. A Boston Thank Terrier. <laughs> Okay. Iggy is a Boston Terrier and the stand has the stand The Fool, a stand made of sand. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the Speedwagon Foundation, Abdo tried to cap Abdo and Joseph captured him in New York when the pound catchers couldn't catch him. So the Speedwagon captured him to like study him, and now they're like, we could use him in the fight against Dio. He's a dog. By the way, Zig I Iggy sucks. No actual growth between Iggy. Iggy's just terrible. Sucks. Yeah, right? They suck. So anyway, they're in the desert. There's a stand user who has like a stand made of water kind of thing, just floating through the fucking sand, hiding another stand, st attacking people. They like almost gouges Kakuin's eyes out. Aldo's throat is cut. And they're like, holy shit, what the fuck is this thing? And Jotaro forces Iggy to help, who's Iggy's just like, nah, I don't care. Ain't my business. 
They're forces to help. <laughs> and, you know, like, they, they f make a glider out of the sand using Iggy's stand. And then this dude is just, this blind dude with the water stand just got a cane in the sand tracking all the movements like echolocation and shit. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he, he's like, the dog's going to let me fucking get caught. So his stand throws the dog all the way at the stand user. And the stand user's like, holy shit, there's a fucking dog coming at my head. And blo they, they attacks the dog. The dog stand attacks him. And then... Meanwhile, Jotaro's now behind the stand user, and he's like, wait a second. Oh, snap. That's bad. That's, uh, that's a stand user. And he just punches this dude out. Like, so to the point where, like, they, they try and hit him, but done. And this dude kills himself before revealing, um, revealing Dio's location. They throw Kakuin in a hospital in a nation that can give him health care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just, gonna, just gonna have that moment there. <laughs> <laughs> so then they go to another town and they meet they, they meet the Oingo Boingo brothers. Really? <laughs> Some of these references they don't even bother hiding. I love it. <laughs> I know. One of them can alter his face to like pretend to be people and the other is a future predicting comic book. Right. They're trying to kill him. And Joseph, Chitara, Ponoraf, they're like, all right, they'll die from drinking poison. So the one that can change his face changes his face to try and be like the like the, the waiter. And Joseph is like, we're just not going to drink anything that isn't sealed. So no tea, no coffee, no nothing, no alcohol. It has to be sealed because we could be poisoned by assassins. And he's like, what the fuck? No. So they, they try and do that. Iggy causes a ruckus, makes them spit out the poison, right? The, the poison tea, because everybody's like, you're being paranoid, right? Naturally. Boingo predicts that Jotaro's head is going to be split in two by a bomb. <laughs> so <laughs> That's quite the so prediction. Boingo does. So Oingo plants a bomb <laughs> inside an orange in their car, <laughs> but is surprised by... Joseph and Polnareff, right? So he changes his face to look like Jotaro, and he's like, yep, 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 I'm Jotaro. And they take the bomb with him, and he's like, oh my fucking god, there's a bomb in the car. And they're like, what are you doing? We're gonna go visit Pol We're gonna go visit, visit Kakuin at the, at the, at the, the hospital. And he's like, yep, 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 yep. And he tries mm -hmm. to get away, and the bomb blows him up while he has Jotaro's face. So the prediction became true, but it wasn't Jot it was Jotaro's head that was destroyed by the bomb, but not Chitaro. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So, <clears throat> next stand user uh, the, the, the Joe Star's face is Anubis. Now, it's a sword inhabited by a stand. And whenever right. a person holds the sword, it makes them into like a fucking brainwashed killing machine. So this dude who's been abused by his family and his friends straight up kills people. Goes to attack Polnareff. Polnareff kills him. Unveiling a secret technique. Where he like, you know, shoot. Silver Chariot looks like a fencer. So the, the, like the sword came, comes out and just pops the brain. And then he's like, woo! Nobody knows about that secret anime technique. All right, good job. So then, <laughs> and then, you know, they take the, the, the sword and whatnot, right? And then they put it down. He's not aware of the true nature. And so he's going to a barber to get a, a, get a shave. And then the barber tries to kill him. And the barber tries to kill him with the sword who's now been possessed by Anubis. And now the sword has memorized all of the techniques that he's done. So now he can't beat him. So then Jotaro finds out, fights him with sword, uh, Star Platinum. And, like, he, he stabs Jotaro in the gut with the sword. And Jotaro looks at him, and he's like, You just activated my trap card, sir. And he takes Star Platinum, and he starts breaking the sword into a million little pieces by punching it. And then the, the, the stand user's like, oh, God, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. I'm in the fucking sword, you dick. 
and then the sword goes flying into the Nile River and gets stuck there. And he's like, great, I'm at the bottom of the fucking Nile. Cool. Egyptian god, zero. Stardust Crusaders, one. While this is happening, one of my favorite episodes happens. So, Luxar. Joseph discovers an electrical outlet poking out of a rock and is shocked. It's a stand. Bassett, stand of Not Maria. Li- as, in, as in shocked literally or shocked yeah. figurative? No, no, shocked literally. So right. one of the I'm Egypt- shocked that there is an outlet on this rock. Yes. So he's magnetized and begins to attract all sorts of metallic objects. Oh, God. He almost dies on an escalator. He's like, please, someone stop it. You know, like, people are, like, wondering what's going on. Abdal and him become magnetized, and then they start, like, kind of, like, dry-humping each other in front of public, but, like, because of the magnetization. And everybody's just, like, looking at him, like, what are these two doing in public? And so (laughs) it becomes so hard to deal with this woman who has magnetized them. She keeps running away, and she tries... (laughs) She tries to kill. She's like, you're going to die. And he's like, yeah, you think that. And all the metal comes rushing towards them and crushes her. And at this time, while they're dealing with that, Jotaro and Polnareff are dealing with the worst character in Star Trek. Alessi. I hate him so much. He has to stand set. Whoever is touched by set de-ages. Right? Uh It's like a shadow. Yeah. Polnareff becomes a kid, is taken in by a kind woman. Then Alessi turns her into a fetus. And tries to drown... Yeah, I know, gross. Tries to drown her, uh, drown Polnareff while the fetus is dying, right? Jotaro finds out that something's going on. Polnareff can't remember him because he's a kid, right? And so Polnareff... (laughs) Or Alessi touches Jotaro with his set. He's like, now I'm a, I'm a grown man. I'm going to kill another kid. And Jotaro, as a fucking, like, 10-year-old, is like, good grief. Just because I'm a kid doesn't mean I can't kick your ass. And this 10-year-old beats up this grown man. Nice. And when he goes unconscious, his powers reset. Everybody de-ages back to where they're at. And then they're like, hey, buddy, when they wake him up, hey, guess what? You're gonna die. And they beat him to death. They knock him into space. Space seems to be the place where all the bad people go to die. Always. So, you know, more stuff happens. You know, Oingo from Oingo Boingo comes back, teams up with Whole Horse, tries to kill the Stardust Crusaders for a third time, ends up borking it. (laughs) And they end up almost getting killed. So then the Stardust Crusaders end up in Egypt, right? Where they meet Daniel Day Darby. Uh-huh. I don't know if that's a reference to anything. Hold on. All right. So he's a gambler. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'll gamble with you. Yeah, yeah. The references to the American singer Terrence Trent Darby. Got okay. it. Okay. All right. Everybody, everybody knows that, right? Yeah, totally. Anywho, so he's like, I'll, you know, they're playing poker. He's like, I'll, I'll, you know, yeah, I'll tell you what you want to know if you gamble your soul. And everybody's like, ha, 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 ha. turns out his stand steals people's souls and turns them into poker chips. Okay. So he beats Joe's, he beats, he beats Ponaraf and jo- jo- Joseph in a game. And Joseph's like, no, my daughter. And, J- Jotaro is like, all right, I'll play you. And it turns out Darby's rigged the entire thing in his favor. Everybody in the bar knows who he is, is working for him. People outside of the bar within like a one block radius are working on him. And Jotaro just like stare- stares at him and he goes, I raise my cards. He doesn't even look at him. He goes, I raise. Yeah, you want my soul? I'll give you Abdul's soul too. You know what? If we fail, my mother's soul is r- mood anyway. So you can have her soul too. And Darby's like, I, I rigged it, right? Like, I totally rigged it. No way didn't I rig it. Like, he doesn't have a good hand, right? 
And you know how poker is a game of like psyching your opponent out, right? You've played mm-hmm. poker? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this dude totally flinches and gets psyched out and just completely, completely just bolts and just goes insane before he could reveal Dio's location. Oh, oh my God. The Boingo thing came after the Darby thing. Right. Drunk, get a pass. So, anywho, they hire a grifter, a beggar, who it turns out to be pretty wealthy from begging. Um, you know, to, like, try and find the picture of where Dio... Because, you know, they, they go in there and they're like, Oh, Hermit Purple, slap a Polaroid in half and find a location. They find a building and they're just trying to find out where the building is. That's what they were asking the bartender who, who poured the tea like a boss. Poured a tea like a boss, mom. Yeah. The tea of badness. Yeah, a tea of badassness. Yeah. Right. You gotta have the bad and the ass in there. So anyway, Iggy's just you know, the he the the beggar goes and finds the place. He's like, I knew it, and then gets crushed by a giant ice block. Turns out I, there's a Yeah, no, I, I know. I, in Egypt of all places. Turns yeah. out that Dio has a pet bird, a falcon that is the ice slinging that has the ice slinging stand horus and iggy sees this this stand trying to kill a kid and his dogs and it kills the dogs there's a lot so there's a lot of animal deaths in 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 jojo and there's a reason for it the creator of the anime has strictly said i'm sorry if it's triggering he's like listen Bad guys are supposed to be bad. You're supposed to understand their motivation, but you're not supposed to like their motivation, right? So I make the bad guys do really horrible things, like kill animals. Yeah, yeah. because you're not going to like them after that. You're going to be like, I can't wait for this bitch it's to get one punched. Of the, it's, one of the, it's one of the quickest ways to establish that you don't like them. Yeah, right? Like, seriously. Like so, in the first season of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Exactly. Danny, rest in peace. He's a good dog. Anywho, so, you know, more dogs die. Iggy's, like, trying to save this kid. They have a fight. Falcon versus dog. Who do you think wins? I'm going to go with Falcon. You you know what? You'd say that, but the dog wins at the cost of one of their paws. Oh, that seems like a trade-off. Right? Like, weird (laughs) trade-off. Yeah. So, Kakuin's eyes are healed, reunites with the Joe Stark group, they find Dio's mansion because Iggy sends him there. He's like, I found this bitch. I didn't have a personal interest, but I am missing a paw, goddammit. They enter the front door, and they're welcomed by Tellens T. Darby, the younger brother of Daniel J. Darby, who mm-hmm. his stand manages to drag Jotaro, Joseph, and Kakuin into like this little video game world. And they're like, we're going to play some video games. And if I win, I get your soul. And I put in this creepy doll. And so, Kakuin loses against him. And Jotaro, who's never played a video game in his life, plays a baseball game. Right? And it turns out that this Darby's uh, stand can read through souls and, like, take advantage of that by being like, oh, so they're going to do this move. Like, kind of like a precognitive thing. Right? Mm Mm-hmm. And Jotaro's never played a baseball game, and he starts winning. And he's like, how are you doing that? You're cheating. How can you do this? Are you cheating? And he looks at his soul, and he's like, no, 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 no. Are you doing something unsavory? And he's like, yes, 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 yes. And what are you doing? And they, he loses. And Joseph used Hermit Purple and put it in the console to cheat so that Jotaro could win. But he never thought to look at J- yeah. Jotaro. He never thought to look at Joseph. <laughs> And Jotaro beats the shit out of him, and they free Kakuin's soul from the little marionette puppet. All right, we're almost at the end of Stardust Crusaders. Are you ready? Because the best part's coming up. Okay. Bring All right. It on. All right. Well, almost. We're not at the best part yet. We're not at Dio, but we are at Jotaro, Joseph, and Kakuin exiting the Darby room. Meanwhile, Vanilla Ice, one of Dio's last minions, has been converted to a vampire unknown to him 
by be he kills himself and then Dio reanimates him as a vampire and he doesn't know. Vanilla Ice, by the way. Okay. You, you, get, mean, you get that I, reference, right? Like I mean, I just assume the actual vanilla ice. But, you know. <laughs> kind of looks like him, yeah. So he yeah. has a he has a stand and he, he fights Abdul and Iggy and, and Ponaref. And it's so sad because his 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 stand is called Cream. So it's vanilla ice and cream. And Abdul pushes Ponaref out of the way and Cream just literally disintegrates Abdul, killing him. Mm-hmm. He kills him. So they have a fight, right? He can, vanilla ice can swallow people into like a portal that disintegrates them. And all that was left is Abdul's arms. And Ponoraf and Iggy fight him. And Iggy uses the last of his strength to save Ponoraf. To, and and Ponoraf realizes that he's a vampire. And even though he's got like his his leg is mangled and his, his hand has like several of his fingers missing from Vanilla Ice's stand. Right? Mm-hmm. He manages to stab Ice's throat and then Ice transforms into the vampire and then he ends up standing in the sun and turns to stone and dies. Oh, I pushed him in there. So now we're up to the final part. Dio. Dio and the world. By the way, Dio stand the world looks like one of the covers of the Ronnie, Ronnie James Dio album. Naturally. <laughs> yeah. So Ponoraf confronts Dio first. Dio, it's like, you dare confront me? What do you humans have to gain from this? It's like, come at me. And so if you come up these stairs, I'll know that you actually mean to challenge me. And Ponaf takes a step up the stairs, but ends up a step backwards. And he doesn't understand why. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Jotaro, Joseph, Kakuin break through an outer wall and make Dio retreat from the sunlight. And he's like, what the hell is going on? They, they go to the top of the tower of this keep where Dio's casket is. And they, they meet a vampire named Kenny, uh, Kenny G, who is a servant of Dio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, Dio's going to beat you up and all this jazz, right? And so they, yeah, 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 whatever. And they open the casket. And inside is Kenny G, who was just standing beside them dying he's dying right so they end up they end up being like what the fuck is going on what does his stand do they jump out of the mansion through the window into the sun light to protect themselves from dio but sun it's it's what 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 is what is the time of night is it dawn or dusk dusk is night got it so it's it's uh, dusk is approaching Group splits up. Kakuin and Joseph try and get um, Dio away from them, while Jotaro and Podorov just like kind of follow behind to like jump them. Right? Dio is just like, yeah, I'm just Dioing it up. I'm uh, I'm cool. He he ends up like meeting a U.S. senator, and the U.S. senator is like, I'm a U.S. senator. He's like, yeah, you're my chauffeur. Drive. And he's like, no, I'm not. And he tries to leave the car, and then he ends up behind the seat again. And he tries to exit the car, and he ends up behind the seat again. Of course. And then every time he tries, Dio just smacks him down. He's like, drive. And so this guy drives, and they have like a little thing. He kills him, and he starts chasing Joseph Joestar through the city. And he starts flying with his stand. Meanwhile, Kakuin is, is also like chasing after him on the roofs of Cairo, Right? And Dio looks at him, and Kakuin's like, I got you in a fucking trap, motherfucker. You're in between a dozens of lines of Hierophant Green's uh, tentacles. If you touch any of them, my ultimate attack will hit you. And so Dio, like, kind of sm- uh, laughs. And what Dio does next reveals his power, but not to them. Kakuin has to figure it out. He uses the world. The world can stop time for up to five seconds. So what he does is he starts basically rushing towards Kakuin, breaking all the, the explosive things, 
and punches a hole through Kakuin's chest. And Kakuin goes flying back when time restarts, and he's like into a water tower, and he's, he sees the hole in his chest, and he goes, oh my god, I'm dying. And he can't speak. And he's looking at Joseph, who's like wondering what the fuck just happened, because they saw Dio in one instance, and then Dio attack Kakuin. Right? And he, they're like, what the hell happened? And Kakuin's like, I figured it out. He can stop time. So he looks at this giant, like, grandfather clock, like Big Ben kind of thing, right? Like in Cairo, like a giant clock. And he uses uh, Hierophant Green one more time to use an attack, and he stops the clock on one of its sides. He just, like, breaks the clock so it stops. So meanwhile, Dio's like, what up, bitch? And Joseph's like, I'm out of here. And starts swinging away using Hermit Purple. And he's like, come on, man. You got to figure out what the hell he just did. What the hell he just did. You can't, you can't, you're smarter than this. And he stops. And Dio, like, stops at him. And he's like, come on, Dio. Come on. Don't you want to drink my blood? Don't you need my blood to do something special? And he looks at Dio. Or Dio looks at him. And he's like, you've encur- encompassed your stand with Haman. The one thing I can't touch. And he's like, I should have figured, he's like, all right, yeah. And he realizes, he realizes, he thinks about it, and he goes, Kakuin, stop the clock. His stand can stop time. The clock stopped, time stopped. The world can stop time. And he, he, he calls him out on that, right? And so, eventually, Jotaro get there. You know, Joseph's trying to run, and Jotaro, um or Dio, throws a knife at Joseph, like, right into his neck, killing him. And he's losing unconsciousness. And Jotaro and him are like, Jotaro gets over there, he's like, I'm gonna fucking kill this bitch. I'm sick of this shit. I have been dealing with this for 50 days. My mom's dying. You just killed my grandfather. The old man rolls up his sleeves. And Dio is like, you're gonna approach me? You're going to approach me. And Jotaro, this is an actual quote. Jotaro goes, I can't kick your ass if I don't come closer. Wildness. So they have an epic fight with their stands. Dio keeps stopping time. And Jotaro is moving fast to the point where he can, like, hold his own. But Dio is just, like, still playing with his meat. And then uh, what happens is, you know, he, he gets tired of playing with his meat and he throws like 30 knives at him. That's Have you ever? Knives. Yeah, that's a lot of knives. You, would you throw 30 knives at a person? I don't think I would do that. I only have two hands. But can you stop time? I mean, if I could, that'd be awesome. Yeah, right? So, like, so many things to do with that. So he throws like 30 knives at him and a couple of them go through. Turns out he put a bunch of like phone books and stuff in his jacket and his hat and stuff like that. And the, the, the knives didn't hit any major parts. But, you know, Dio's like, oh, is he dead? Or I don't know. I, I should check. And so he uses Star Platinum to make it look like he's dead, like crushing, like holding his heart so his heart isn't beating. And so he holds his breath. And Jatar and, and, and Dio is like, Yes, he's fucking dead. All right, let's just cut off his head and make sure. Last Joe Star. Don't need any more Joe Stars. They're really annoying. And meanwhile, Ponorath comes out and stabs him in the head, and he stops time, pulls the the knife out of his head using his stand, and just like punches Ponorath against the wall. And he's like, "You almost got me, motherfucker. You almost got me." And he's about to kill Ponorath. And at that point, Chitara, who's been playing dead, he's like. Gotta make a move. And he's like, all right, aura, aura time. And he just punches Dio so hard in the head that his skull caves in and his brain is damaged and he can't move his legs. And Dio's like, wait, what? What's going on? No, 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 no. This ain't funny anymore. I don't like this. And Jotaro just grabs some gasoline from a nearby car and he's like, yep, we gonna burn a vampire tonight. It's gonna be all right. We're gonna burn you tonight. Da, 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 da. 
And Dio's like, no, 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 you can't burn me. And he's like, yeah, I can. He lights the lighter. Dio stops time and starts like inching, using his one arm he can move towards a car that's passing by while time has stopped. And he grabs the car and he's like, later, sucker. <laughs> and he ends up going back. To, yeah, he ends up going back to where J Joseph is. And he like drinks Joseph's blood. And that was the thing that could make him super strong. He needed Joestar's blood to fully synchronize with Jonathan Joestar's body to become perfection. So his hair becomes less messy, becomes more spiky. And Jotaro is like... Jotaro's like, God damn it. <laughs> he sees his grandfather's ghost and he's like, You got this, fam! I'm out! And he's like... Motherfucker, I don't want to deal with this. Fuck this vampire. I'm sick of this crazy bitch. And it turns out that his power, I think he solved it beforehand, that he can also stop time with the with Star Platinum, that their 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 in, their abilities are kind of intertwined. But he can only do it for two seconds instead of five. And after he drank Joseph's blood, Dio could stop time for like nine seconds. So, yeah, two versus nine. Not a great number. So what happens is he grabs a fucking... What, what, are, what are those things you saw Austin Power? The, the thing with the rolly bit that can crush a person to death. Steamroller. That's right. He grabs a fucking steamroller and he's like, I'm gonna kill you! And he's like, yeah, bitch! And he, like, crushes him to death. And he's like, yep. All right, I stopped time. I crushed the Joe Star to death. Nobody's stopping me from ruling the motherfucking world. And he's like, wait, wait a second. Why, why can't I move? Why, why can't I move? And he stops. And oh, lo and behold, Jotara Kujo appears behind him. Turns out, as he was under that uh, steamroller trying to punch itself off of him, he stopped time right as Dio's time was up and made him waste it. So now he's stopped. And he's taunting Dio and he's like, how does it feel, man, to have everything that you tried to do just gone? And he, like, breaks his, uh, breaks his legs. And he's like, time's going to start up in another second. I'm not a man to kick a man while he's down. So I'm telling you, I'm giving you one last chance. And it's best because have you ever played Overwatch or know of Overwatch? I know of it. So you know who Matthew Mercer is? He plays McCree. I know who Matthew Mercer is. Yeah. <laughs> Critical role. He played McCree. There's a line in Overwatch. He's like, it's high noon. I swear to God, they ad lib this in. He's like, this is like the old West, Dio. We got draw your piece. It's high noon. And he says it in the fucking English dub, and I'm, I'm laughing about it still to this day. And he's like, draw your piece. And he's like, you... He, he, Dio goes into this long speech about humans being shitty, and he's like, how about a little blood in your eye? And he spritzes some blood in his eye, and he's like, I win, you lose! And he summons his stand to, like, kick Jotaro, and Jotaro blinded, summons Star Platinum, and punches Dio's stand, the world, and the leg. And this awesome music plays. The dun 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 Gotta listen to the song. Stardust Crusaders album. Let's listen to that song. It's great. Jazzy, saxophones, amazing. Anyway, you see Star Platinum's... <laughs> sounds, sounds good to me. I'll definitely do that. <laughs> you, saw, you see Star Platinum's knuckles, like, crack and, like, crevices. And like Dio's like, ha 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 ha, I win, motherfucker. And then you see the world. His leg starts to crack and it goes all the way up his itty bitty body. And he's like, wait, 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 wait. I can't die. I'm the immortal Dio. And he like crumbles into like a million little pieces. But he's still alive. He can still heal because vampires are broken. Just like in everything. Yeah, like, oh, right? God. Level drain, son of a bitch. You know about level drain, right? Yes. Okay. You're old school. I love that about you. <laughs> nobody nobody I know knows about the pain of level drain. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> anywho. <laughs> anywho. 
<laughs> so they go and the Speedwagon Foundation, you know, recovers Joseph's body. And Dio's disabled and he's still healing. And John and Joe and Jotaro's like, you know, the only thing you did was piss me off. And that was it worth it, Dio. I'm gonna fucking kill you. I'm gonna put you in the sun, you stupid bitch. And the Speedwagon's like, oh, I'm sorry, Joseph died. And Joe and and <laughs> And Jotaro's like, wait, his blood is in Dio. Can you give him a blood transfusion? And so he gives him a blood transfusion. And I'm going to tell you right now, Jonathan, uh, you know, <laughs> it's so stupid. He gives him the blood transfusion. Joseph revives. He's like, ah, ha. You have revived your greatest enemy, Joe's uh, Jotaro Kujo. And Jotaro is like, son of a bitch. And he's about to beat him. And he's like, no, 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 no. I was joking. I was joking. I was joking. He's like, old man. Who wrote the, the album? Who wrote the song? Um, God, what was the, the, the reference? It was so stupid. It was a Weird Al reference. You know Weird Al, right? Huge fan. Right? Like, who isn't? If you're not a Weird Al fan, you're just awful. Hold on. I, uh, who wrote? No, it was Eat It. He was like, who wrote the song Eat It? And he's like, Weird Al. And he's like, only my grandfather would know something that stupid. And he's like, yes, yes. And apparently his grandfather, being reanimated, decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to prank my, 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 my grandson. <laughs> Best Joe Star. I like that. Right? He, he comes back to life and he's like, well, time to fuck with him. So, the, <laughs> yeah. so then they take Dio's remains and they're like, into the sun you go. And they turn to stone and it disintegrates him. Then they, they kind of like go and him, Jotaro, Joseph, Ponorath, they say their goodbyes. They, they honor Iggy and Abdal and Kakuin who all died. Holly finally heals up and, you know, th th that's it. That's it. That's that's the end of Stardust Crusaders. Have a good time. Go back to Japan, that everybody. Was the... <laughs> that was the end of the third season. Yeah. No, it gets crazy. That's crazy. Right? That's... All right. So you know what? I got way too much into all three of these. So we'll do Diamond is Unbreakable another time. I, to be honest, I think I'm just going to end up watching it. And, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, find, I'll, find, I'll find another. But I'll tell you right now, Netflix first two seasons or first season which is phantom blood and battle tendency is on netflix right now and on the 28th of february 2020 they're adding season two which is stardust crusaders which is stardust Cru so the way it goes is like the first two seasons are like 26 episodes and then stardust crusaders is like 50 it's oh, a it, yeah no it's they like i said it really just kind of amps up amps up you know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 wild. It I is. I will go out of my way to go and uh, seek these episodes out and watch them then, because it sounds yeah. like a ball. It sounds like the music's good. It sounds like it's got plenty of action in it. It sounds like it's pretty crazy. Uh, it sounds like it's actually you know, the, all the all the music references. Well, it sounds like it's right up my street, and I still yeah. can't believe I've never heard of it. So we're gonna we're gonna end here. I'm I'm gonna thank Flaming Monocle for the amazing job he did. I I really enjoyed hanging out with you. And being drunk, did you? I this guy. I, I feel I feel, I feel I learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a bizarre adventure. It's wild. It's fun. It's one of those things that simultaneously takes itself seriously without taking itself seriously. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, like when something like it adheres to its rules and it, it's a serious. Like, it's a serious story that's wrapped up in whimsy. Yeah, exactly, and it's it's just fun, and it's. Like, listen, it's gay as fuck, man. Like, you watch this, you go like, oh, he ain't lying. Well, I mean, I watched the cherries. I mean, that's... that's. Yeah, yeah. you saw that, and you're like, wow, what the heck? Yeah. It, it's so cool. It's so colorful and it, adventurous. It's just wonderful. So, all right. Time to ask you, the sober person, what did you learn about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? So, in terms of what I've learned, it is a, a whimsical ad adventure or anything else that's really 
as as you say, the Jojo's not one person but a lineage, and he gets together like a super group of dudes, and they have their mega abilities, which go from being one thing into being another thing. And um, yeah, it's it's. I mean, I, I actually really like the story with the masks, to be honest, in the in the Phantom Blood one. I really like so, that story. So, like, no joke. It's super, it's super, like, underrated how much, like, so the, the most popular one is Stardust Crusaders, and then, like, all the stands and stuff, but the vampire stuff was pretty, pretty good. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's underrated. There's a lot of respect for Phantom Blood. It's just, like, everybody loves Stardust Crusaders, but humble beginnings, right? Humble beginnings. I think also because I quite like... I, I I saw some similarities there between that and new Castlevania anime, which I've really enjoyed watching as well. Oh, I haven't seen that. I gotta watch that. Oh you God, know... go watch that, and then we. Can... I... All right, I'll I'll watch that. You watch JoJo, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna regroup, and we're gonna have fun. Yeah, yeah. No, thank you so much, Flaming Monocle, for coming on to Drunk Fandom. You were wonderful. Um, I'm not just saying that because he is holding me hostage with a ray gun, because he's not. But he could. Remember, he's sinister. And the fact, I was going to say, the fact that I'm not should say should speak volumes about how amazing I am. Yes, no, and and he, you know what it is? He loves ferrets. Ferrets I are his. I I I, I, I used to have a uh, an ferret, just the one, and it was a a rescue from a friend who rescued from a from a laboratory setting. So that was quite cool to have. All right. Um. <laughs> Just again, one last shout out because we we usually have people who do the the drunk fandom as part of the fierce ferret foundry. Uh, Monocle, you are officially, you know, part of the fierce ferret crew. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming on uh, again. If you haven't checked out Flaming Monocle, I'm gonna be checking the numbers, people. I'll, I'll do the whole thing. I'll do the whole thing. Yes. YouTube.com slash Flaming Monocle. Facebook.com slash Flaming Monocle. Twitter.com slash Flaming Monocle. Instagram.com slash Flaming Monocle. Twitch.tv slash Flaming Monocle. There you go. All right. Yeah. Amazing individual. Definitely check him out. It, there is no villain that can't be beat. Makes Dr. Robotnik look like a scrub. Just pointing that out right now. Although All Jim right. Carrey did a really good job. Can't wait to see it. All right. Dude. And that's, that's all we wrote. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching our video. Now to give a special shout out to our sponsor tier patrons. Neji Kuma, we appreciate all the support you give to us. You keep the channel growing and the content flowing. If you want to be alerted to when we post a new video, make sure to ding that bell next to the subscribe button. If you like the content you see here, then consider tossing us a follow on twitch.tv forward slash fierce ferrets. And if you're really feeling the ferrety love, please consider supporting our work at patreon.com forward slash fierce ferrets. We don't make any money here on YouTube, so we rely on the generosity of our Twitch and Patreon subs, listed in these credits here, to bring more quality entertainment to you. And you'll get some great rewards for helping out. Thanks again, friends. And we'll see you next video.